GNCC returns to racertv.com for the third round of the 2024 GNCC season. And it is Bryson Neal who stands out as perfect through two rounds of racing. A convincing win in round number one at the Big Buck GNCC. Down in Palatka, the Wild Boar GNCC battling sand whoops, the Palmettos, and a short break in between as we head to Georgia. It was Walker Fowler emerging as the challenger. An early lead, a little back and forth with Bryson Neal. Can he return here today to the front of the pack and knock Bryson Neal off that top spot of the podium? All that and more starts right here, right now on RacerTV.com. Good afternoon and welcome to round number three of the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized. We are here in Washington, Georgia, Aonia Pass MX for this, the Specialized General GNCC. And we welcome Johnny Gallagher. Hey, man, short week. We were uh, down in Florida. Uh, guys don't get a big break in between this one after busting sand whoops and battling palmettos. We are up in what is going to be a mutter. We don't know that yet. <laughs> well, um, all right. We, we obviously have had some rain. Yes. Uh, we're going to find out here when, when the, uh, the race actually gets started just how bad the conditions are. But uh, it's looking like it has the potential to be that. Uh, a lot of tire decisions had to be made before this race, and uh, we're going to see the outcome uh, coming up here real soon. But, yeah, short week, uh, quick turnaround. Obviously, amazing racing action just a few days ago down in Florida. Uh, we recap uh, the big question. Bryson Neal is human. Uh, another race, and another win. Perfect 2-0 and to start the season. And he had some great battling in there with Walker Fowler. A huge gap back to third with, with Hunter Hart. But, man, uh, what do these guys got to do? You know, uh, honestly, I think uh, Walker came close to doing what they need to do. Um, he actually did get the lead for a little bit yeah. and uh, kept not uh, not really close pressure, but enough pressure that Bryson knew he was back there throughout much of the two-hour race. Uh, obviously, the gap at the finish line, 47 seconds. Yeah. Uh, we know that it had been closer to that uh, throughout the last lap. That said, Bryson very much in control. Uh, but, yeah, just keep that same mindset keep the pressure on and uh you know force him to ride your race not his we'll see if anybody's able to do it today i, I couldn't help but think those battles that you were talking about between walker between bryson early on with walker out front I mean, I can't think of maybe Bryson, a better defensive rider. Is that a good strategy if you're Walker Fowler? Hey, let me get the good start. Let me get in front of Bryson. I'm not going to be able to run away from him. I don't know that anybody has run away from Bryson's speed at this point. But is that kind of the strategy if you're Walker Fowler? Get in front of him, hold him off? Well, I think we saw pretty well all the speed that both of those guys had in Florida just a few days ago. I think in the beginning, obviously, you know, Walker was doing all that he could to try to get away. Bryson was able to match him just move for move. And then when Bryson and took over the lead he was trying to run and just couldn't open up that gap on walker that said i mean if they're not able to get away it comes down to exactly what you're saying racecraft yeah. knowing when to be in the right position and right now bryson just has that dial he's got a dial but hunter hart finally putting it on the box and uh quietly not quietly i guess josh merritt another great day for him as well just finishing off the box and fourth yeah charging very near a podium position there late in the race and uh, ultimately ending fourth and sitting third in the points as they run so such a phenomenal opening two races for josh for sure been a good one adam mcgill rounding out that top Five. Taking a look at the XC2 real quick. We got to show those guys some love. We opened up the season. Uh, Alex Tiemann grabbing a win. And then our visiting rider from the work series out on the West Coast, Braxton Gross. The man was good in the sand. He was real good. At, and that was, you know, you talk about a dominating performance for the top two in XC1 with a six-minute gap back to third. 
Braxton Gross winning by six minutes and yep. 16 seconds in that XC2 class and seventh, I believe, overall. I think so, yeah. Uh, you know, that is a phenomenal performance. Absolutely just on the hammer. Uh, Going to be a little bit different conditions sure. this weekend. Yes. But, uh, yeah, Alex Thiemann, uh can't help not give a shout-out to Danik Paquin. We don't know if that's a proper pronunciation, <laughs> yeah. but a visiting rider from north of the border yep. in Canada. Putting it on the podium in second place in that, uh, in that XC2 class and, you know, a big statement for him as well going to be a fantastic race day well we know we may have this inclement weather is it going to be a mutter is it going to be hey business as usual we know this it's going to be a good race but we want to see what this course is going to look like so for that we'll throw it to jared bolton with a yamaha racing course description well thanks guys as you can tell from my appearance it's what you would call a little bit on the wet side here i'm just kidding it's perfectly dry and dusty and can't you tell Obviously, the big news here this weekend is the mud. Um, this place is no stranger to it. We've seen a number of mud races here. And, you know, it's tradition. We do Florida first, go to Georgia very, the very next weekend. We've been doing that for a long time. We've been coming here and doing that for a long time. Uh, we've been at Aonia Pass since 2003, minus a couple years. They cut in the highway. We uh, had to move down south for a couple of years. And uh, when we come back, it was like coming back home. This place is a really good place. Uh, really fun course, even when it's muddy, it's still rideable, and uh, they're out there turning laps now in the morning, and uh, it's actually getting better. By the end of the youth race, the guys had dug down to some dry dirt, and while there's still a few spots that are a bit on the muddy side, overall, by and far, this course is actually really, really good. It's going to be a great weekend, and it always produces some great racing when you throw some mud into the mix. Give some of those guys that are good in that mud a chance to do something prove something that they can't always prove on a regular day that's this weekend's track description back to you guys all right thanks jared for that track description we're going to uh let mikey waynes go down do some 10 second calls we're going to get a word from our sponsors and we'll be back with all the live racing action on racer tv You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yep, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sort you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You got to pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So. Ah, yee. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. It's a big world out there. How do you choose to see it? When you crave the long canyons, rocky trails, rutted tracks, and lonely highways, they become a part of you. Podiums and personal records, we choose it all. Because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. You just need to ride where you belong. Whatever you drive, however you drive. 
Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles so you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And good afternoon and welcome to everybody watching at home and around the world on racertv.com as you join us here for the specialized general GNCC. We're about ready to set it off here for the ATV Pro Race this afternoon. And as you uh, join us on Racer TV, we ask the folks at home and folks more importantly here at the racetrack for your undivided attention as we turn the microphone over to Mr. Ricky Towery to lead us in a word of prayer. Thank you, Mikey. Hey, let's go to the Lord and let's have a word of prayer together this afternoon. Heavenly Father, once again, we do thank you for bringing us all together safely so we can have a little fun together. Lord, watch over these riders this afternoon. We ask you to keep them safe. Be with the spectators and the workers and all of us. Let us have a wonderful afternoon together, Lord. Lord, once again, continue to watch over our military men and women in all places. Do be with our leaders at the high level and the local level that would make the right decisions for us. Watch over our local policemen, firemen, and paramedics and all our communities across the United States every day serving to protect us. Be with them and their families. Watch over them and keep them. Lord, we race in some tough conditions sometimes. Sometimes we race in the dust. Today it's going to be in the mud. But it don't matter what the conditions are, you always let us have fun, and I thank you for that. Just watch over us. Thank you for being in control of everything like you do every day. You bless us so much every day, so many small things that we take for granted. We thank you for what you do for us each and every day. And when we head down the road this afternoon and tomorrow, take us all home safely so one day we'll get back together again and we'll have some more fun. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as Ricky now will, Ricky Towery makes his way over into turn number one. This is where we like to ask that if you have not already, please. Oh, yes. Thank you, fellas. Let's go ahead. And if you are an XC2 rider, step on the off the uh, ATV, step forward onto that XC1 line. You guys are going to lead us by example. And for the rest of us, if you have not already, please. Remove your hats and cross your hearts as we honor the greatest nation in the world with the playing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rockets raggedly the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, all right, all right. We are just about ready to set it off now. Jeremy Holbert, are you ready? ready? He can't hear me, but I see him. You good, bud? I got a thumbs up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, further ado, without further ado, let's introduce our star. Our starting for the XC1 Pro Class. Riding to the line first. The number one out of Bidwell, Ohio, riding aboard the Phoenix Racing Yamaha, the Bidwell Bullet, Bryson Neal. Rolling to the lot next, the seven, two, three, out of Rogers, Ohio, on a WFR, GBC, and fly racing back to Yamaha, Walker Fowler. Rolling to the line next, the number five, out of Akron, Ohio, on an over tires and moose racing back Yamaha, Josh Merritt. And rolling to the line next, the number two out of Newfield, New York, on a fly racing in Ithaca Recreation Sports back Yamaha, Hunter Hart. And rolling to the line next, the five. 2 1 out of Waverly West by God, Virginia. On an over tires, Moose Racing and McGill Mafia back Tonta. The Gator, Adam McGill. Rolling to the line next, the 7 1 2 out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. On the action off road, Pierce Performance and GBC tires back Yamaha. John Galata Jr. Rolling to the line next, the 703 out of Petersburg, Indiana. Aboard the action off road, Maxis and Fly Racing backed Yamaha, Austin Abney. And rolling to the line next, looking for, in his words, a little redemption here today. The 621 out of Hillsboro, Ohio, on the action off road, GBC and Hauser backed Yamaha, Wyatt. Wilkins. Rolling to the line next, the number 12 out of Sunbury, Pennsylvania. On the action off road, GBC, Amsoil, and Fly Racing back to Yamaha, Chris Borich. Rolling to the line next, the number eight out of Elkridge, Maryland, on the BNR, Kenda, and Fearless back to Yamaha, Stephen Harrell. And rolling to the line next, the 714 out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on a BNR Motorsports Singe Graphics and Bulletproof Doors back to Yamaha, Ronnie Rush. And last, but certainly not least, the number nine out of Casca, Pennsylvania, on the JMR, GBC, Elka, and Moose Racing backed Honda, the Cobra, Jared McClure. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your starting row for the XC1 Pro Class at the Specialized General. And now at this time, there, this is where DJ Judd will exit the Monster Energy Activation Transport. He jumps into the R Max 1000 Yamaha, and we like to say, DJ Judd, remove the meat. And as DJ Judd makes his way off the starting line.
DJ Judd coming through. Got to make sure he gives our riders some space. And now we're about ready to roll. The, no, not at all. Not at all. I have a game plan, Austin Woodrum. I promise. I got an exit strategy. Keep my head on a swivel. I got a front row seat. The Gator. I see you, buddy. Let's do it. Me and you. I'll take that. So now, ladies and gentlemen, waiting on the OK from scoring in our track team. And there is the thumbs up, Jeremy Holbert. Let's see what Ricky Towery's got to say as Ricky now makes his way out onto the start line. A big deep breath, a good reminder for us, remember to breathe. And he lets our riders know one minute, one minute, until we're ready to go racing here at the Specialized General GNCC. Bryce and Neil, a perfect two for two to start the season. Can he keep it going here? He was challenged early by Walker Fowler. What is it gonna take for these guys to get up there and take that number one spot away on the box as Ricky now looks down at his watch. The blue flag waves, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, shut them down, as we are just about ready to roll now. And here we go, Aonia pass, shut them down. You too, there you go, good job. I gotta ask you, Aonia pass, pull, or no, general GNCC, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Oh, that's pretty good, but hey, you all are some bad, shut your mouth because it is nasty, it's rainy, it's muddy, and you are out here thriving and surviving. I'm gonna ask you one more time, are you ready to go GNCC racing? <laughs> seconds for row number one, the XC1 Pro. Bang, and we're off. And fighters jockey for position. Look at the Gator, Adam McGill, right up in the fight. But it's going to go to the 621. That is Wyatt Wilkin on the action off-road. GBC and Hauser racing back Yamaha. He said it himself. He said, Mikey, I'm not happy with how Florida went. I'm riding with purpose today. We're gonna make it happen. Well, he certainly has the start. Now he's gotta go do it for an hour and a half. XC2 Pro-Am class, Alex Tiemann, Keaton Henderson, Jeremy Ladon, Dalton Keys, Grayson Eller ready to roll in 10 seconds. Kenny Schick, Braxton Gross, Tavin Cook, Alex Elioff, Chase Allison, Dylan Walraven, Zachary Phillips, Chance Hickey. Tucker Wyatt, Tanner Walker, and James Gladham. Here we go, BNR Motorsports hole shot up for grabs. That's gonna be the 6-2-2 two, two of Dylan Walraven. Grabbing that hole shot and early lead. Wyatt Wilkin with the Kanati tires hole shot in the XC1 as we turn our attention now to the College A 16 to 18. Aiden Jones, Jace Cooper, Parker Henderson, Evan Osborne, Andre Williams, Ty McGay, 10 seconds. Caden Lambruno, Brody Lee, Jeremiah Wolf, Talon Stout, Nick Daring, Dylan Trigg, Harrison Lindsay, Jordan Berg, Logan Steele, Dayton Hickey, Joey Norris, Damian Hawkins, and Cuddy Whitaker grabbing the whole shot. 4-2-4, Talon Stout. I believe that was him grabbing that whole shot in early lead. Didn't get a clean look at it. He's moving. Here we go. Junior A, 19 plus. Corey Vandalinder, David Machisco, Colton Kushta, Ryan Hendershot, Briggs Lazell, ready to roll in 10 seconds. Brian Brokart, Connor Brandt, Trevor Furby, Furby, Brady Myers, David Witt, Trace Furby, Josh Noble, Dominic Stevens, Wesley Wirtz. Bradley Burroughs, Eric Hayes, Braden Schick, Zach Knight. Oh, getting sideways. Robbins racing, how about it? That looked like the 413 of Dominic Stevens. 
out of Warren Center, Pennsylvania, on that Shrimps Off-Road and DSR Designs back run. There's the roost. Now I'm a part of the race. All right, you're good. Calm down. It's all good, 727. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky getting roosted. Me, he's making sure he hits all of us. I like it. It makes me feel like a part of the race. I know it does for Ricky, too. Vet A, 28 plus. 10 seconds. Tyler Griffith, Henry Moore, Cody Spenno, Nick Davidson, Justin Miller, Jonathan Singleton, Thomas Coons, Kevin Yoho, Jared Little, and Daniel Norman. Oh, 228 gets sideways. 5 4 2 will grab the whole shot. And early lead looking like pinball machines in turn number one. It is slicker than a mayonnaise sandwich. Hold the bread. That's how slick it is. Senior A, 40 plus. Papa P, Jeff Pickens, Will Jones, Rick Marino, Sean Slaughterly, Chris Conklin, and Derek Hart. Senior A, 40 plus. 10 seconds. Bang, and they're off. Coming in hot. Look at the drive by the 303 of Papa P. Coming right at me. And there he is for the whole shot. Right up the inside line. Oh, hey, how are you? Hey, how are you? Getting wild at the General GNCC. College B, 16 to 18. Cameron Mahalan, Isaac Hart, ready to roll. Ten seconds, James Berger, Jake Coulter, Austin Kiger, Alan Tarlington, Austin Miller, Triple XO, Jackson Carroll, Landon Ostrich, Quentin Galker, Aiden Doyle, Noah DeCerci, Evan Ruckel, and Aiden Aliff, 607, a Landon Ostrich on that extreme energy racing and outlaw motorsports back ride, grabbing that whole shot there. See if I got some spare clothes with me in the truck. All right, blue flag waves. I'm ready, Ricky. Let's do this. Junior B, 19 plus. Michael Word, Jack Neely, 10 seconds. Tate Long, Joe Burker, Booker, Brooker, Colby Clark, Andrew Taylor, Tyler Hagen, Aaron Delancey, or Aaron Vickery. There he is. Bobby Duker, Gavin Temple. Zachary DeNoble, oh, big pile up in turn number one. Every which way but loose, baby. 484, Tyler Fisher out of Beverly, Ohio on the Yamaha. Grabs a whole shot and early lead in this one. Pet B, 28 plus, Clayton, Kawasaki, Tanner Davisic, Donald Sparringe, Spurgeon, David Kite, uh, how about Eric Murphy? Ten seconds, Frederick Harder, Christopher Strebbing, Leroy Groms, Brent Pennington, David Darnell, William Barger, Zach Bothwell, John Higgins, Robert Henson. They're battling. Here we go. 8-1-9, John Higgins with the whole shot and early lead right there. One to go, baby, one to go. Senior B, 40 plus, ready to roll. It's Shane Worth, Jason DeNoble, Jason Dillard, Ricky Lewis, Ben Dunlap, 10 seconds. Russell Fry, Bobby McCauley, Forrest Cross, Aaron Delancey, and Steve Kiggins. Here they come. One rider opting for this inside line. Let's see how that plays out. But I think the 357's got the edge. That's Ricky Lewis. And yes, he does. Ricky Lewis will grab our last hole shot of the ATV Pro Race. Wyatt Wilkin grabbing the one for Kanati Tires in the XC1 Pro Class. Well, Bryce Neal, a perfect two for two to start the season. Does that change today? We'll take a short break and get a word in from our sponsors. This is the Specialized General GNCC. We'll be right back after this.
You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yeah, tough day at work. Nice crew to sort you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You got to pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related. So ah, yee. Oh, that is a vibrating pain. It's a big world out there. How do you choose to see it? When you crave the long canyons, rocky trails, rutted tracks, and lonely highways, they become a part of you. Podiums and personal records, we choose it all. Because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. You just need to ride where you belong. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles. So you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Welcome back, everyone, to round number three of the 2024 Progressive Grand National Cross Country Series. It is a muddy day in Georgia for the Specialized General GNCC. My name is Jackson Burrow, and I'm here with Zach Heron to bring you today's coverage. Stay tuned as Zach will be recapping the start here in just a minute. Yeah, thanks, Jackson. What a crazy day of racing we've already had. Uh, hey, no surprise, folks. All right, we knew the weather was coming, and uh, Mother Nature did not let us down. Actually, not as bad as a lot of people thought it was going to be. We're going to be touching on that throughout uh, the next couple of hours. But all in all, some great racing this morning. Uh, we just got wrapped up with some great racing a few minutes ago so that we could go pro racing. And, uh, yeah, I'm very excited to see what we have in store. And if the start is any idea or uh, any indication as to what the next couple hours look like, we're in for a treat. As we take a look at our specialized start recap, fireworks almost immediately here at round number three, turn one. Imagine how crucial the start's gonna be. Look at this, the gator up the inside, leaves it wide open. Look at the dismount from Austin Abney. He will rejoin the race, but it's gonna be Wyatt Wilkin grabbing the whole shot. Uh, looks like that is McClure there in second. Uh, and I believe Borich maybe in third, but now we see Bryson Neal getting a little pushy, a little shovey. Got uh, collected in there, but he's somewhere around the third or fourth place position. We take a look at XC2. Once again, everybody barreling towards that inside, trying to run the tight line. And uh, it's going to be a drag race to the line, but Dylan Walraven going to grab the official hole shot. 
Uh, and I believe a couple of these top positions switch with almost immediately within the next corner or two. Uh, and as, as you guys can see, look at how hard these riders are fighting for traction. Uh, a huge shout out to Specialized here at the Specialized General GNCC for that start recap. And there we see a couple of replays. Uh, this is not live. This is just uh, some previous shots that we collected of our leaders coming through. We see it, it looks like Bryson Neal may have already put himself into the number one spot. Uh, and look at the standing water, the flowing water, I should say, coming from the rain that we've had so far throughout the evening last night. There is the Gator. Uh, that might have been, there was the number two, Hunter Hart. A point we didn't make was Hunter Hart having a very bad start. Uh, I don't know if it was a bike issue, what, but uh, almost dead last coming off of the line. There we see the number one, Bryson Neal, reaching up, pulling. The roll-offs uh, might still be Wilkin there in second. There is McClure in third. Looks like that was Borch in fourth. And so uh, pretty much the top of your field there we see Hunter Hart has started to make a couple of passes as well. But the, most of the field has remained the same except for one thing. The big bad number one has worked his way to the front of him. And uh, looks like we're going to take a look at the points as they stand right now. We're going to welcome to the truck Johnny G. Johnny, man, what, what crazy conditions, great racing, but all in all, it's the same guy we see out front already. Yeah, absolutely. Bryson Neal getting off to a decent jump, you know, in the top five there and able to work his way to the front pretty quickly. Uh, looks like he's got some pressure from behind, though, from uh, Wyatt Wilkin, who is our, obviously, whole shot award winner. And, uh, man, it's shaping up. I, I got to tell you, from this morning, it, it's crazy to me how quick this track is developing into a raceable track. Definitely some deep holes that uh, we're going to have some great action for you guys at home. We've got a lot of drone shots from our Yamaha Racing Live drone today. So we're going to see these guys kind of trying to traverse these tricky sections of this race course. And, uh, yeah, the points on screen, Bryce Neal up front already, Walker Fowler and Josh Merritt a little bit further back, as well as Hunter Hart. So three of your top four as they run in points were kind of having to dig, in, dig themselves out of a little bit towards the back of the pack. Looks like they've already made some moves, and uh, we're waiting for the leaders to come through here as uh, we get a little deeper into lap number one. Yeah, absolutely. Going to be interesting to see. And you talked about that drone shot. At the moment, at least, the rain holding off for now as we take a look at the Yamaha Racing uh, uh, track map, I'm sorry. Uh, we've got a couple of different cams set up throughout the course. Uh, obviously, the Monster Mile, I think, going to be a crucial spot to look at this weekend, uh, as, it, as well as the FMF PowerPoint. But honestly, one of the biggest obstacles that we've seen, uh, Johnny, you and I saw it in person, the finish line area. Yep. Been absolutely treacherous throughout the day, as now we see our leaders on screen. And it is still Bryce Neal out front. Wyatt Wilkin there in the number two spot. And you can see at this point, they're kind of feeling the track out. They don't know how deep some of these holes are. Yes, everybody pedaled it. McClure there solidly in third. Everybody pedaled it yesterday. Some of the guys went out and looked at it this morning. Looks like McGill now up into the fourth place spot. Borch fifth. Walker Fowler sixth. Hunter Hart seventh. John Glotta Jr. eighth. Sorry, actually, that was not John Glotta Jr. That might have been uh, Austin Abney that actually got around him there. It was kind of hard to tell. We know he was off the bike in the first turn. And now we're seeing some XC2 riders up. I can tell you right now from that gap, we've got an XC2 leader leading the overall on corrected time as they run right now, which points out exactly what I was saying. It looks like the XC1 guys, Bryson, he's not concerned about losing some spots in the overall on lap one to these guys on corrected time. He wants to make sure he doesn't bury that Phoenix Racing Yamaha. And later in the race, he'll work on getting that time back. Yeah, something we're going to be talking about all race long. Uh, at some point, it becomes about survival, right? Not only for man, but for machine. Uh, these conditions, brutal, whether it's the water, uh, whether it's the heat that the ATVs are generating as well. So these riders got to be very, very smart, more so than maybe the, the suffer sesh that we saw just a week ago in Florida. Yeah, this is going to be a, an absolute 180. I mean, you can see these guys are just standing up, kind of riding on the pegs, cruising. And that's because these machines throw so much mud and water up into the air. If you go full speed the full race you're going to pack that radiator full of mud no matter how much mud protection you do you're going to ruin your goggles you're going to have wet grips all day and it just makes it a really long really hard day so early in the race you want to save energy you know kind of try to pick good lines now when you come out in the fields it's a melee and that's what we're seeing on screen i mean one two three four five six seven you got 10 guys in a camera shot and uh <laughs> everybody's wanting to make the passes in the open sections because it's so hard to follow the guy in front of you through the mud. You just want to kind of try to get him when you can and you get an open opportunity at racetrack. And we, uh, we talked a little bit about the, the standing water principle as far as how these guys approach this a week ago, but a whole different ball game out here today. It's uh, it's pretty much, I mean, this section right in here that you're seeing on the Yamaha Live Drone, that's pretty much all standing water. It is, and, and honestly, Zach, it is so much different to, you know, we, we obviously saw it in the bike race. We did see it with Walker Fowler and Bryson Neal kind of trying to blitz and carry the front end. You know, when you've got 
100 feet, 200 feet, 500 yard sections of standing water. You can't just go slow the whole way through that. So you gotta just kind of take one on the chin, uh, do the best you can to kind of try to protect your goggles and your grips. Uh, and you can see right now, the position you absolutely want to be in, though, from the terms of roost and protecting the bike, out front. And right now, that's where Bryson Neal is. As if everything wasn't going well enough for him so far in 2024, he's got the lead early, and he's setting the pace. Well, and, and you know, they say luck is the residue of preparation, right? He says he's had everything set up kind of like he wants it. His body feels good, everything like that. But we saw he was making those passes happen before they had even inserted or inserted the wood for the first time. Yep. Like, he had made two or three passes, sitting about fourth or fifth, coming around the first turn. Watch this section right here. If you see kind of where they're crossing over that road, it's really deep. And if some of those guys swing out to the right, I think you can see him now starting to move over a little bit. That's really deep standing water. I believe that's Walker Fowler way over here, way on the wide line, trying to get a run in the dry grass to make a pass not quite able to make it stick uh, but doing everything looks like possibly Hunter Hart and Walker Fowler trying to make their way around Chris Borch who last we knew was in that number five spot McGill there in fourth the uh, lone Honda holding it down for him there or sorry Jared McClure actually third and fourth so uh, I got two two Hondas up front there uh, still leading the way though number one on that Phoenix Racing Yamaha Bryson Neal He's, uh, you can see, like, not a lot of sense of urgency. They're yep. not blitzing things. They're not jumping into the holes. They're just kind of cruising, figuring the track out. I think we're going to see the pace go up. Another thing, too, it's been about an hour since we've had ATVs traversing this course. And what happens is the water from around kind of runs in and fills the holes. As it gets splashed out, the course is going to get better in the coming laps, in certain sections. Well, and that's what I was just about to say. These riders are kind of getting the first look as far as the full lap. But they're also thinking about what this thing's going to look like in an hour and a half to two hours. Hours, right absolutely and it's it's some of this stuff like right here you know this is pretty one line it's getting deeper you can see everybody pausing they're waiting because they do not want to get roosted by the bike in front of them there is your xc2 leader on screen so and there is last race winner braxton gross looks like he's sitting second place then james glotta don't normally get to see these guys so we're going to give them a shout out alex elioff up there there's grayson eller uh running up in a top points position so far in that xc2 class with a uh, second and fourth place finish i did see when we were watching that xc2 hole shot alex Teeman, who won the first race and was third at round two, dead last off the line. So he's got a lot of work to do getting through this pack if he wants to get up front and battle for the win today in the next season class. Yeah, without a doubt. And uh, unfortunately, not going to be the best conditions to have to do it in for sure. Uh, now, we saw Walker Fowler. He's trying the wide lines, right? Creativity as far as line choice goes always seems to be rather important. But in conditions like these, it could both make or break your race, right? You go wide and it's a little deeper than you thought. That could be, it could spell the end of it. But sometimes, uh, now Walker, I do think it didn't pay off for him there, but I think that might be a line he's saving for later. Sure, and you could see what happened. I mean, he had a long way to go around there, but he was carrying so much more speed. If Chris Boric would have left that inside open, thinking he was going for a wide line, Walker Fowler could have just kind of shot in there out of nowhere because he had so much drive. The thing in conditions like this, you just do not want to follow. You're taking so much ruse, and we've talked about it before. You cannot pass a machine that is directly in front of you. You need to offset one way or the other, and in conditions like this, that becomes even so much more important. Now, you can see uh, the two main lines developing on that one corner. They've got standing water in both, and we've been talking about the depth of the water. At some point, is it just a, a fingers crossed? I'm going to go with the outside and hope that it works? Yeah, there's actually things you can look for. Um, you know, when, when you get to areas of running water, um, if there's ripples, that means there's something underneath it and shallower. When you have running water and there's no ripples, uh, uh, it it kind of really makes you a little leery because it could be limitlessly deep. Um, but a lot of times you're not wrong. It, it really is just kind of a crapshoot. Um, oh, look at this. Looks like Bryson Neal kind of getting hung in those ruts or was pausing momentarily because he was not sure which line he wanted to take. Keep an eye on this shot right here. I think we're going to see somebody try to make some passes because to me, that high line actually looks good. Now, granted, that's from the drone. But if they made that hard right, we could see some passes made here. Oh, there you can see him splitting off the line. Looks like we got a couple passes being made back there, but nothing for the lead just yet. Everybody's afraid of that very high line, and it could be a case of a lot deeper than it looks from at, you know, 200 feet in the air where we're at. And then that was kind of going to be my question. When you say a uh, line doesn't look appealing, something like that, is it is it sloppy? Is it uh, is it too too used? Like, what do you think classifies in these conditions at the moment a good line from a bad line? The biggest thing that you're looking for in an ATV is clearance. Uh, so obviously we have the skid plate, the belly pan in the machine that hangs down, and then the rotor skid uh, skid plate that goes under the rear sprocket. Some guys run a sprocket guard setup, which doesn't have, but. Basically, you know your clearance over the back part of your rear swing arm. That's going to be kind of what stops you from getting that forward drive and your belly pan. So when you've done it long enough, you can just kind of look at a set of two ruts and figure out 
hey, those are too deep. I'm going to drag. I need to either carry speed to get through that or choose another line. Or, you know, it's all oh, you can see. That's really deep right there in that hole. He dropped his, uh, looked like it was the second place rider, Wilkin, dropped his left tire into that hole and almost kind of got hung there. But getting out, but man, Pickens are slow. They are just taking their time, you know, going out and around. Nobody wants to go into those lines. And it, again, a big part of it is a case of some of those are completely full of water. And they see, you see the rider in front of you take the time to go around and you question, is there something he knows that I don't? And sometimes you can just take a chance. Look at that, right down the main line, making it work. But look how deep the water, oh, he's Stop. buried. Wow. Well, he was able to shake the machine, grab some traction, get out, but he definitely looked like he may have lost a position there. We don't know what router that was, looking like he's back in about seventh or eighth place, but that's where taking those chances can uh, can either help you out or it can bite you real quick. So taking a look now, things have tightened up significantly here. As uh, looked like for a minute, Bryson Neal kind of detouring off into some of that thick stuff. And we've seen earlier today in the ATV U class, a couple of riders trying to avoid the, the deep ruts. They get into the thick slop, essentially, and they end up getting stuck. They, they can't move. They need mud fleas to help pull them out. And so uh, a huge gamble either way you look at it. Yeah, and that's exactly what these guys are trying to avoid right now. You know, we're so early in the race. This isn't like a last lap where it's like, hey, man, I got to make a pass and make it anywhere I can. Uh, if you're Wyatt Wilkin, like, Man, you're in the best possible position. I mean, Bryson Neal is a master of picking lines. You know, he's obviously got a good pace once he does decide to pick it up here coming up in a little bit, I assume. And Bryson Neal is right there. He's going to be able to just key off. And you see those guys hanging way tight to the inside of that tree, showing you just how much water is in those standing ruts. Because obviously it'd be faster if they could carry more momentum around the outside. But they're choosing to check way up, stay to the inside, and stay out of the water. It's interesting you bring up the, the position that Wyatt Wilkin finds himself in, a sophomore here in his XC1 season, uh, and, and we talked to him a little bit, but I don't want to, I'm not saying Bryson is a better rider, but obviously Bryson extremely intelligent. Things have been going his Experience. way. Experience. Yeah, exactly. The guy has got uh, the resume of success. You think Wilkins kind of hanging and seeing exactly what kind of lines Bryson's looking at right now? We saw Bryson hug that real tight inside and Wyatt kind of funnel in behind him. How much do you think he's just taking notes at the moment? I mean, I think if Wyatt's in the right frame of mind, he is surely <laughs> doing exactly that and, and just taking notes, kind of going to school. Uh, he has no pressure from behind him right now. They've opened up a little bit of a gap on those riders behind him. It looks like they may have changed positions. Actually, looks like McGill may be up to the third place spot, but yeah, Wyatt Wilkin in a great spot. He's just, I don't anticipate unless Bryson Neal has an issue or really takes a bad line, seeing Wyatt even try to make a pass, because then you're in the position where you have to be the one trying to find the, the good lines. Absolutely. Well, Wyatt Wilkin in a good position on track, in a good position off track as well. We were actually able to catch up with Wyatt before this weekend's racing. We'll let you guys take a listen. All right, we're here with XC1 sophomore Wyatt Wilkin. Uh, now, Wyatt, we were just talking off camera, not the biggest fan of the sand, probably pretty happy to be leaving round two. Oh, yeah, the sand, it's its my nemesis. Like, I go there throughout the winter, train, ride, and then I get to the track, and I'm like, why are we here? Um, just happy to be back in some dirt. Um, apparently got some rain coming, so maybe some mud this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as, ta as far as between rounds two and three, one of the quickest turnarounds in the season, anything you're doing differently, you train in a little less, uh, any different plans to recover here for round three? Uh, so we stayed in St. Augustine this week. Uh, of course, there's no ride in St. Augustine, so we just kind of did a little vacation. Workouts didn't change workout when I could. Um, as far as, like, food and stuff goes, we're pretty dehydrated Monday, Tuesday, so trying to get that back in me. And uh, I don't know. When it's a mud race like it's going to be, conditions are different. It's not as, like, physically grueling. So uh, not as worried as, like, hydration it was as Florida, but I'm ready to roll. Yeah, you, you brought it up, the weather, it's what's on everybody's mind. Uh, so far, so good here on Friday, but what's the mentality? What do you do differently to prepare? When, when everybody says it's going to be a bad race, how do you get ready to face that with a positive attitude? Honestly, I, I don't enjoy racing in the mud, but I always do well, so I'm looking forward. All right, guys, I am here with. All right, I think uh, we we're here in the GBC Tires pit stop area. It looked like we uh, kind of jumped over there. We got the leaders coming through, wanted to get the shot to see if we could get a running order. And uh, looks like we've already got some riders coming in. John Glotta Jr. looking like he's going to grab some fresh goggles. See Stephen Harrell there in the background doing the same. Jared McClure coming in, getting some fresh goggles. There is Austin Abney after that <laughs> early uh 
departure from his machine in turn one. Some of these guys actually taking fuel. McClure taking fuel, thinking, hey, if I can get it all done now, I don't have to worry about it a little later in the race. Folks, while we're watching this uh, racing action on screen, we are joined here in studio by a true legend of GNCC racing, uh, multi-time ATB 4x4 champion and uh, local here from Raven Gap, Georgia, Mike Penland. Mike, thanks so much for being in the booth with us today. Great it, to have you here. It is a real honor. Well, Mike, you, uh, you're watching this on screen, no stranger to these, this area and these conditions. You know, what do you think it is about uh, this Aonia Pass facility that kind of really lends itself to mutters? We've had more than the fair share here over the years. Uh, I live 125 miles from here. I live in Raven Gap, Georgia, and we get 100 inches of rain a year. 100 inches of rain a year. Yeah. So you're saying that this property likely saturated even before yeah. the rain we got the last couple days. Maybe, but they don't get near as much as we do. But... But red clay is slick. <laughs> There's just red clay is, yeah, like snot on a doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's a uh, vernacular we'll have to add to the Racer TV yeah. repertoire, uh, snot on a doorknob. I'll and that, folks, notes. if you think about it, you can only imagine how slick that is. Mike, as we're watching these battles on screen, you know, you were one of the true pioneers of 4x4 ATV racing, not just in GNCC, but anywhere. <laughs> you know, having seen it, w w your first year of racing, correct, it, it was in 1980... 91. 91. Okay, I thought you were 89, so 1991. Here we are, fast forward, a lot of years, my math isn't so good. Yeah. What's it like to come back to the GNCCs after a few years away and, and see your family and, yeah. and uh, see how far things truly have come? S some of the stuff has really moved up. The, the youngsters... You know, a lot more youngsters than there used to be. And uh, the the four-wheel drives, the ones I look at more, you know, they, they haven't changed in certain ways. But, buddy, the riders are moving. They yeah. Are, they are flying. We see those guys like Brandon Frazier and Cody Collier and obviously former XC1 Pro. Cody Collier himself, yeah. former XC1 Pro. Landon Wolf not with us this weekend. But, uh, you know, those guys are, are truly riding in the tracks that – fellas like yourself and, and many others put forward but uh it's really amazing to see you come back and, and kind of take it all in how does how does it feel just to see how far things have come it, it's great you know I, I like seeing it the only problem is i wish i was out there <laughs> uh, that's that's the only problem uh to see them rolling and moving and, and just the stuff they do is great i, I, I I'm, I'm i'm jealous of them you know uh but, yeah, they're just doing what they're supposed to do. Absolutely. They're making it look easy. But you know from all your years of experience, a track like this today, there's so many things that can jump up, bite you around any corner. Absolutely. You know, yeah. we saw the pace seemingly a little bit slow on the first lap. You know, that's a trick like maybe a, we won't. We won't say older fellas. We'll say the more seasoned riders yeah. like yourself and myself. We learned back in the day, you don't want to just go charge and headlog into stuff you can't see because you can get yourself into a bind, can't you? Sometimes you get... Get, you do something you can't get out of, away from, it's your, your race is over. Mike, I'm going to tell you one thing. These guys don't have one of the benefits you did. Actually, two benefits. No reverse, no four-wheel drive. Yeah. So if they get stuck, they got to get down in there. And uh, yeah. Now, Bryson Neal's a pretty big boy. He could probably lift that four-wheeler out of there. But uh, I don't think he's wanting to do that today if he doesn't have to. No, no, nobody does. Having to stop and having to get off, you know, those are two bad things. Mike, if we can ask you quick, what first got you into GNCC racing all those years ago? How did you hear about it, and what brought you out and made you decide you wanted to start competing? Okay. I was racing motorcycles, okay, motocross and, and scrambles and stuff. Well, my dad was my sponsor, and dad got killed. And so I didn't – he got killed in 77, and then I wanted to race. And – I didn't want to do motocross where you, you know, 200 foot doubles and all that stuff, and and I wanted something to toughen me up, and and I was looking for, for, a, I, I heard of hair scrambles, and and I was looking for a race that was on Saturday so I could go to church on Sunday, and a friend of mine, Terry Smith, he we looked for about a year and he came to me one day and said, I found something. I said, Well, what is it? He said. It's it's a it's, it's called a, a cross country. I said, tell me about it. Well, then it was two and a half hours. I said, that that's good. He said, it's uh, you know over the river and through the woods. I said, that's good. Uh, he said, uh, and it's on Saturday. I said, that's good. He said, 
but one thing about it, he said, it's four wheelers. I said, I got a 300 Honda four wheel drive. So that's, that's good too. And, and so that's what it picked up. Well, Mike, we uh, we appreciate that things worked out just that way. Yeah. We know you were active in your local church, and I've heard a portion of that story before. You said a big deciding factor was for you. You would drive all night to get home so you could be oh, there yeah. for church the next morning. Shows your, shows your faith and your commitment not only to racing, but your family, your faith, and uh, that's a big part of GNCC Racing, yeah. obviously. And we couldn't be more honored than to have oh. you here this weekend as the Grand Marshal for our event. Ah, you can shake your head at it. Mike's a very humble man, folks. You can't see him on screen, but uh, he's shaking his head as if it's no big deal, but he is Truly a legend of the sport. For anybody on site here, he's going to be with us all day today. Uh, take time. Come say hello. Maybe even get an autograph. And, uh, you know, he, he, if you've ever seen back in the day, the gentleman with the big straw hat and the big mustache, he's still got the straw hat and he's still got the mustache, and he's here taking in the action today. Yeah. Mike, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. You're welcome to stick around. Okay. Help us call the action. Watch whatever you like. We uh, yeah, we appreciate you. We are, absolutely. We appreciate you being here. And yeah. uh, anything else you want to say? No, just it, it's it's so good, so exciting, and I'm thankful to to be here and get to watch it. Well, we are truly thankful to have you here with us watching it. And uh, like I said, please do stick around, yeah. hang out, watch the screen, chip in anytime okay. you want. You, we know your uh, your information is limitless. Right now, I'll say something I've never seen. You know, from the air. <laughs> and this is really neat. Yeah, there you go, folks. Mike Penland watching in studio on the same feed that you guys are watching out there at home or if you got your phone out out around the pits here. And uh, this is the first time he's seen the Yamaha Racing Live drone footage and uh, bringing the action to you in a whole new way, showing you these just how deep these lines can be, just how far these guys have to go out and around to make passes. And now uh, we can see on screen, Zach, the, uh, the pace is starting to ratchet up a little bit. Looks like uh, now that these guys have kind of got a little time under their belt, they've figured out what lines they want to take and they're really starting to push the pace yeah absolutely your predictions 100 percent coming true uh, those guys said all right i've got got things figured out let's go racing and, and uh, you almost immediately saw the pace pick up the gap yes. started to yo-yo back and forth uh, but right now we've seen a couple of times i think as the pace has picked up you started to see some of those mistakes riders rushing i don't know if uh, the, it's not the line they thought it was or maybe they got forced into a line they were planning on going but uh, i think this is just as much of a, just as much about not making mistakes as going fast at the moment you don't want to throw anything away yet. Zach, I think while we got Mike in here still, we need to put him on the spot. Mike, we need a prediction. Who's it going to be? Who's going to oh. get the win today? No, you got it. That's a deal. You sit here and you talk, and you can't give us the politically correct answer of the fastest uh, guy. We need a name. Who's going to get the win today? To me, it's really looking like Bison. There you go. From the man himself. There we the go. The legend, the myth. All things 4x4 ATV racing. Mike Penland says he believes Bryson Neal is going to get the job done today. So far, he's proven completely right. Bryson Neal leading the way. Has not put a wheel or a foot wrong. He's just picking all the good lines. And Wyatt Wilkins, just kind of a trailer there, man. Just following him. Not really, uh, like I said, not putting any pressure on him. Staying just out of that roost zone. But they're starting to make some ground on the riders behind him. Yeah, I think Wyatt right now is kind of just going to sit and kind of wait this thing out. I think uh, very similar to how we saw Walker in the beginning of the race is last Last weekend, he's in a good spot. He doesn't feel like he needs to start wicking up the pace. The problem is when Bryson Neal drops the hammer, there's basically no other way to say it. It doesn't locked start to, in. yeah, he does, clocked in, baby, 2024. When he wicks it up, he goes from one to 10. He doesn't go one, two, three, four. And it's like, all of a sudden you're like, wait, Bryson's starting to go? No, Bryson's gone. And so Wyatt needs to be paying real close attention. And uh, it's interesting. I've seen Wyatt a couple of times not take the same line Bryson's taking. Yeah. Bryson's tried some things out, and Wyatt says, I don't, I don't like that. I'm going to try something else. So Wyatt's definitely, he's taking notes, but he's also still making his own decisions out there. And we can see there the Gator still sitting back there solidly in that third place spot. So he's not quite as close to Wyatt as Wyatt is to Bryson, but still very much there. can see those guys ahead of him. Don't know if it's a case of just kind of not wanting to go any faster, trying to save the goggles, save the grips, that kind of thing. Or if, you know, that pace that Bryson is not pushing has kind of drawn him and Wyatt Wilkin a little bit further away from Adam McGill there in the third place spot. Uh, but still very much in, you know, insight within striking distance and solidly in a podium position at least for the moment. It's so funny with this Yamaha Racing Live Drone, you, you don't quite see the elevation change, but you can see where the water is puddling up at the way these hillsides make or break these corners. It gets so deep on the outsides 
uh, where some of this water is pooling up. And then on the others, it's, it's almost dry. We saw even by the finish line, they're starting to dig down. And if you get far enough down, there is actually dry soil, believe yes. it or not. But yes. that right there, that is hard packed, slick red clay, just like you were talking. What, what was that? What snot it? on a door handle? Knob. Snot, snot on, on a door knob. knob. There, there it is. Go. That is a, there we go. There is Adam McGill there in third here at the three mile mark. We'll wait and see. Fourth place is still Chris Borch. So shout out to him. Walk, no, sorry, Hunter Hart there now up into fifth. And then Walker Fowler looked to be Austin Abney. And then John Glotta Jr., Ronnie Rush. Those are about your top eight or nine checked in. That is Stephen Harrell there on the number eight machine. And uh, so here's the difference. We see Bryson Neal pick up the pace. Where the XC2 guys go? They were all right there. Don't know if we actually got a uh, – when we come back, we'll get a check-in of exactly what the overall running order was, and uh, we'll give you the rundown of the top 20 overall when we come back. Zach? Things are looking fantastic here. It's a little rainy, but the action is still hot out on track. Bryson Neal has the position right now, but uh, with plenty of time still left on the clock, it's anybody's guess. This is the specialized general GNCC for round three for the progressive GNCC racing series. We're going to get word from our sponsors, and we'll be back here in just a couple of minutes. Back to the racing action in Georgia. Unleash aggression, reliability, and premium quality with Kenda Tires. Delivering exceptional performance on all types of vehicles. Automotive, ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, bicycles, trailers, lawn and garden, and even golf. Trust Kenda Tires to guide you on your next adventure. Kenda, designed for your journey. Born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Cometic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Cometic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best inside their engine. Cometic Gaskets are always constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environments. Whether it's a championship on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts alike depend on Cometic. Cometic Gaskets, sealing championships since 1989. I'm seven-time GNCC champion Walker Fowler, and I run GBC. Second. Like a bullet into the first turn, the number one with the pink helmet and pink bars. It is Walker Fowler, the seventh. I'm Devin Feehan, and I run GBC. I'm Josh Merritt, and I run GBC. I'm Chris Borch, and I run, and I run, I run GBC. guys uh, we're down here at the general as you can see the weather's already pretty crazy uh, luckily moto tees is stocked up with these rain jackets 100 percent waterproof i'm dry as a bone underneath but uh it's really coming down here you guys better be prepared if you're not moto tees is stocked up so you're set for the weekend all right do you think they bought it <laughs> having a great time you know it's all fun and games 
until uh, it was no longer Mikey and Jackson spraying me with water. It was actual rain. Uh, but all kidding aside, guys, huge shout out to Moto Tees for taking care of us. Uh, that that rain jacket, I've been rocking it all day. I'm wearing it as we speak. And uh, you can get your very own, very own at MotoTees.com or on site at uh, any of your GNCC races near you. Uh, might be walking over to Moto Tees, checking out what they've got for us this weekend here in just a little bit. But for right now, we're back. Round three. Oh, look at this. Is that Wyatt no. Wilkin? No, no. Le the okay. hair is not nearly long enough I was for Wyatt Wilkin. Say. Come on now. Uh, but uh, da -da 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 breaking news. How about this? If you are watching live scoring, timing and scoring, I said Johnny Gallagher, I think we have a mistake. I don't think we have a mistake. I believe on adjusted time, Jordan Berg out of the college A class is our overall leader. Now, again, on adjusted time, Glotta in the two spot. And when I say Glotta, I mean Junkin James Glotta out of the XC2 uh, in the number two position. And Grayson Eller is in third place on adjusted time out of the XC2. Our first place in XC1 is for fourth place. That's a tongue twister in the overall Bryson Neal. Johnny, we've seen this before in conditions like this. Now, also, today is an abbreviated race due to the weather conditions. It is an hour and a half as opposed to two hours. Do you think maybe this is the day where we may see someone that is not of the XC1 taking it overall? Um, anything is possible. And yeah. huge shout out to Jordan Berg, uh, obviously James Glotta, Grayson Eller, all those guys, Braxton Gross, Damien Hawkins, all the XC2 guys and College A guys that are up in the top positions in the overall. And my short answer is no. Uh, it, uh, anything is possible, no question. However. But as they're running right now, Bryson <laughs> Neal has just picked up the pace, and we've already seen that gap open up. Uh, Bryson was leading. He was laying down a very conservative pace. Still, for those guys to be able to do that, come from two, three rows back, phenomenal ride on lap one. But I'm going to make a not-that-far-off-the-books prediction sure. and say things are going to start to stretch out yeah. as the laps go on. I think we'll see our top three overall for sure. Most likely yep. will be XC1 riders. But, hey, man, that's why we run the that's races. Right. Not taking anything away from those guys. It is something we've seen many times in the past where early on in a race, for one reason or another, uh, you know, those XC2 guys and those College A guys, they're fast off yes. the rip. They, these XC1 guys are a little older. They take right. some time to get warm. Not saying they're old, but, uh, <laughs> you know, Bryson Neal, um, Walker Fowler, Josh Merritt, a lot of these guys pushing. Adam McGill over 30. Yeah. Uh, Chris Borch over 40. Currently running the fourth place spot yeah. uh, in the XC1 one class uh so we've got some past winners uh going back to 2017 we've only got two names on the list we got two wins for bryson neal and one two three four five for walker fowler in the last uh seven seasons of racing here at the aonia pass facility in washington georgia and uh it's absolutely uh just kind of really starting to pick up the pace become a race you can see the the uh, lines are really starting to develop and the pace is picking up Taking a look there, you see these guys just tucking from insides to insides, really just uh, flowing against the water, I guess probably the best way to say it, actively making their way around it. And this has kind of been the story right now, just staying just out of that roost zone, not uh, probably not collecting too, too much on the goggles. Curious to see whether or not we see any more of these, any more of these guys uh, changing lines. It's so funny, we, Johnny, you were talking about it earlier, the, the depth of the main line starts to get, you know, pretty scary. At some point, it starts grabbing the underside, and it can stop the quad altogether. But you move out of that main line, you're in God knows how thick of, of slosh, where it's not, uh, it doesn't really have any traction. You're just spinning, and oftentimes it shoots you off in a direction you're not even trying to go. So it's a little bit of a balancing act. Like, is this, is this too deep of a rut? Do I need to move out of the way? Or if I move out of the way, am I gonna throw this thing completely out the window? Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, w when you're trying to make those split-second decisions, especially at speed, uh, you know, it becomes so challenging. And, you know, you can really see the penalties that are paid. I mean, one wrong move can cost you. Obviously, we saw earlier in the lap some of the riders, you know, kind of de deciding to go up the gut of that one mud hole. And it looked good, looked good, until it wasn't. And had that have been just a little bit deeper, I mean, that could have been a day-ender. Uh, but look at this. Bryson Neal really on the hammer, and Wyatt Wilkin is just matching him step for step. And I got to say it, obviously both these guys, Ohio guys, from the same region of Ohio, but Wyatt Wilkin is known to go run those OXCR races, yep. Wexer races, all those kind of uh, local regional races down in that uh, area of southwestern Ohio that are kind of known to be mutters pretty regularly. Yep. And I've actually seen some videos of him over the years practicing in full-on mutter conditions. There we see Walker Fowler on screen, looks 
looks like he's giving chase to look like Hunter Hart in front of him. John Galata Jr. has actually gotten around Austin Abney. So we have not seen a lot of passing, but there was one that was made there. Uh, and then Ronnie Rush. So that is about your top eight in that XC1 class that have checked through that section of racetrack right there. But the top two out front starting to pull a little bit away from the Gator. Adam Gill sitting there in the number three spot, starting to get some pressure from behind. Could that be the six-time champ, Chris Borich, lurking back there? Is today the day that Chris Borich puts it back on the box, possibly even in the center of the box? You want to talk about experience? I would say nobody on this front row has more than that man right there. Maybe he throws the clock back. We, we were talking about boriching people earlier that uh, kind of stay back there, be methodical, and then make that last lap pass. Uh, Johnny, we know like brain races or muddy races like this, it's always kind of like throwing the dice in the, in the Yahtzee shaker, and things can get really, really crazy. But, you know, Zach's interview with Wyatt, and then we spoke with him as well for the Monster Energy pre-race support. Not happy with how he performed in Florida. Um, Phil feels like he is a top five guy for sure and should be fighting for maybe that, that third spot on the podium. Today, uh, talking the talk, walking the walk so far. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's, uh, he's making it work. Um, he is uh, doing all the right things at this point. Um, you know, he's, he's just kind of... <sighs> He's like we said. He's in the draft. He's he's doing the following, and uh, he's not really he's not really challenging for the lead. But he's not giving Bryson any room. He's not letting him get away. We've talked about it earlier. Once Bryson Neal goes, if you're not with him, we saw it happen to Walker Fowler in Florida. That one mistake, Bryson got away, pulled that small gap, and Walker never really lost much more time throughout the race. Just could not make that 20, 30 seconds back. It just kind of seesawed through the race. So right now. We got to give a shout out to Wyatt Wilkin because this yeah. is the closest we've seen absolutely anybody run Bryson Neal in several races, quite some time now. Yeah, and I think Wyatt, like to your point, Zach, he, he's there. He, he's staying out of that roost. I think that's why he's not all over that rear grab bar. It's uh, hey, I'm gonna, I want to see what this guy's doing. The Bidwell Bullet is known to just absolutely check out and say goodbye, run away and hide. So if I can stay with him and maybe even have the uh, the notepad and the pencil out and take some notes. Yeah. Uh, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, the one thing I was going to say is it, 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 Wyatt Wilkin doing everything right, but there's like two gigantic megalodon sharks in the water behind him. For sure. Adam McGill and Chris Borich. Yeah. I, I mean, if there's two guys you don't want behind you in a race that likely could come down, especially later on in experience, calm, yep. racecraft, like – you know, he's sandwiched between the best to do it right now yep. and arguably two of the best to do it in history. Sure. So he's learning, and right now he's doing it better than the two behind him. But look at that. They're starting to sneak up. They are. You know, you got to wonder. Adam McGill takes a look back over his shoulder, and, you know, you guys, some people may just see Brown Guy. Yeah. Adam McGill sees Chris Borge, and 100%. he knows, hey, this dude has borged me yes. plenty of times. Yes, we're still only, uh, what is it, 47 minutes into this racing action, but we're, we're basically halfway at this point if I believe you had said they are, in fact, yeah, calling yeah, it a one-hour and 30-minute race. On that, so yes. if it's not, we're halfway through this thing, and Adam McGill and Chris Borch are both within sight of the lead. That's like blood in the water to yeah. a 150-foot-long, 13,000-pound Megalodon shark. <laughs> they are going to try to eat everything in front of them because both of these guys, Adam McGill getting a win last year, in yep. 2023 in very similar, eerily similar conditions sure. to today at the John Penton. But Chris Borich has been on quite a dry spell, not only for yep. wins, but for podiums. podiums. You know, when you have you to go back to Snowshoe three years ago, I believe, three or four. Yeah, and yep. I think 2020 was his, or 2019 was his last podium, I, yeah, I do I think believe. So. Uh, I know it was his last win for sure. Um, but that said, I mean, this is a guy that has won 75 right. of these races over the time. You know, it's, it's honestly great that he's up in this position to give us the opportunity to talk about him. This guy is literally a living legend on the race course out there and currently sitting in the fourth place spot with inside of the lead. So we, we talked about an abbreviated race, an hour and a half. The riders were told this on the line. Uh, I've heard guys going around telling them, so they all knew this beforehand. You talk about the, the two megalodons, right? They're circular and they're waiting to strike. When in an hour and a half is that time? Do you think that they're waiting for anything in particular, waiting to get through the pit road for the next time, or, or is just they're going to know it when it's time? Well, none of these top four have pitted, um, at least from what we saw on screen. They all passed through the pits. They might have gotten some goggles along the way and maybe say, taken some towels for their grips but none of them have stopped for fuel. So in a race like this, um, honestly, dare I say, 
halfway around the last lap is kind of when, you know, if you're, granted, you got to kind of have to keep a eye on things when you have somebody with the speed, the racecraft, the track knowledge of Bryce Neal out front, uh, you do not want to let him get away. So I do think if Adam and Chris had the pace right now, they would try to close up a little bit quicker. I don't think they're throwing everything at it because they're not panicking that the top two aren't really getting away, but they're also not exactly right there. So, you know, they're, they're likely probably trying to make those moves to get up a little bit closer. And if they do, and if they feel they have it, I think we're going to see those guys just empty the barrels and everything they have go as deep as we've ever seen either or both of them go and uh, see if they can't make a run at the lead. Uh, talking to Adam McGill prior to Palatka, I talked about the battles he had at Big Buck with Walker Fowler, and I said it was kind of, you know, we turned the clock back a little bit, kind of watching you two go back and forth, and he said, Mikey, that was awesome. That was, like, some of the most fun I've had on my ATV, and the exact same thought he had was, this feels like, you know, five, ten years ago uh, battling with Walker. So I got to think the exact same thing is going through Chris Borch's head and Adam McGill's head as those two guys are kind of linked up right now trying to catch up to the young guy, Wyatt Wilkin. And, Johnny, you know, because you're, I think, maybe a year or two older than me. By the way, happy belated birthday. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but when the young buck that's, like, early 20s wants to challenge you, you, you almost have that ego. Oh, I thought he got hung up there. That ego come into play is like, uh-uh, no, no, no. I'm still here. I'm still the man. Uh, you're not going to get the better of me. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, – uh, for me personally, I think these guys are in a little bit of a different position, uh, but I was so late in my career that I didn't really have that chip on my shoulder okay. unless somebody talked trash. There like you go. the minute they would start talking, yeah. So we're, watch this. Keep on screen. I think we're going to see some pit stops go down here. Looks like, yep, there is Wyatt Wilkin into the action off-road pits there. Uh, that may be a very busy area here because a lot of action off-road riders coming in. Bryce and Neil, you can see him rinsing out that radiator. They got that pressurized fire extinguisher, just water in there, but trying to keep that radiator clear and keep that Phoenix Racing YFC 450R there uh, cooling properly. Look at that. Adam McGill with a very, very quick pit stop. Definitely made up some ground on the riders in front of him. Looks like Chris Borch having a little bit longer pit stop and giving up some ground. But uh, still in fourth place it looked like as they left the pits. But look at how much ground Adam McGill made up with just one quick pit stop. Gator trying to chomp. In the rain and mud of Georgia as the rest of our XC1 checks in now to get a fuel stop. Saul Jared McClure, you guys had mentioned it too, went in. All the guys stopping for goggles. Oh, there we uh, see Owen it. McClure. The famous Josh Merritt helmet the change. The helmet change. I was just down. about to say that. Explain that, Johnny. That's going to be new to Zach. Jo Josh Merritt, the only rider we know that, that has done this and does this. Uh, oh, did we just see a lead change? No, those riders must have. No, it is still Bryson Neal up front. For a yep. moment there, I thought we may have had a shakeup. Uh, Josh Merritt will take a clean helmet to reduce weight on days like today. So he gets an extra uh, barcode for scoring. Uh, this is all approved. Everybody's yep. aware it happens. Uh, and he changes out his helmet halfway through the race. So he takes a couple extra seconds to buckle it. Um, but he feels that the weight savings and just the freshness of a fresh helmet kind of rejuvenate him. And uh, you know, he at this point, uh, if he wants to get up into a podium position, he's going to need to to start putting it down because I think we're seeing the pace ratchet up. Whatever works, make it happen. Two laps completed. B. Neal out in front, a 2.6 second gap between him and Wyatt Wick Wilkin as we watch that unfold on racertv.com. Third place, the Gator, Adam McGill, six and a half seconds back. Borich in fifth, or excuse me, fourth. He's six and a half seconds. And then Hunter Hart running out that top five, four seconds back from. Chris Borish. Fowler kind of quietly back there lurking as well. Five seconds off that pace. And Austin Abney's checked in in seventh. And drum roll, there's Stephen Harrell and Josh Merritt checking in behind them. So there. Merritt making up some big time. He was last in that XC1 class early in lap one. Yeah, he was actually stuck on the tire. Not stuck, but kind of hung up on the tire in turn one. And then yep. again in turn two, there was a lot of contact. You know, we talked about it before the race, and we knew that the whole shot was going to be incredibly important. All these guys going for it. And uh, Josh kind of coming out on the losing end of that. I think he was second to last yep. going into the woods. Austin Abney, obviously, off his machine. I think he was last. But, you know, look at that group right there of Walker Fowler, Austin Abney, and Hunter Hart sitting in the 5th, 6th, and 7th. All three of those guys very much at the back of the train when this race started and now have worked their way up uh, inside or near the top five. So I think that might be the group on the move right now if, uh, if they can keep it rolling. Trying to refresh timing and scoring to see where Jordan Berg as well as James Glada and Grayson Eller fall into this on the adjusted time. you got to think they're stopping for fuel as well. There you see. And nope, sorry. I thought that was Jordan yet. Berg just checked in. No. 
kind of looks like after those pit stops, uh, Wilkin and Neil, they're not really gaining or losing any time. Like, I think Wilkin lost just a little bit of time in those pit stops, but he's still maintaining a relatively close gap. Yep, and it looks like they're starting to again stretch it out on Adam McGill just a little bit. So McGill able to make up some time in the pits there. Not that he's lost major time, but it looks on screen maybe a few seconds here uh, and a few seconds there, and it's starting to stretch out just a tiny little bit. You can see he was almost to the rear wheels of Wyatt Wilkin, and now he's not even in the same camera shot. So will these two put down a pace too fast for the other guys to uh, to match, or will someone work their way up through the pack, or will it be Adam McGill laying it down, coming up, putting the heat on these guys? Johnny, I know you explained it before and I'm not sure how much we see it uh, like it wasn't necessarily true in that corner but Bryson kind of the, uh, the the splasher if you will right he gets the water out of some of these ruts and why it's still close enough to where he's able to kind of slip through and not suck up as much water and have to go through quite as deep of water just because of how close he is off Neil. No, that was absolutely, uh, I mean, a perfect assessment, Zach. I mean, when you come through, you know, the water standing, you kind of displace the water momentarily and it starts to run back in. If you're close enough, you can get the benefit of not getting that splash at all. And that's exactly where Wyatt Wilkin is sitting right now. And it actually is a pretty significant advantage in conditions like this. Well, our riders have checked in. Quick update for you. New leader in the XC2, Christopher Howard now leading that one. James Glott is still in the two spot, and Grayson Eller in third. Still no signs of Jordan Berg yet. New leader in the College A class, the 333 of Brody Lee, uh, 10th OA. So our uh, chance at history, at least for the moment, is, uh, is wiped out as the XC1 guys, as Johnny mentioned, have wicked it up and uh, hold the top nine spots in the OA. Yep, interesting to see, though, Brody Lee there sitting in that 10th place spot, actually leading all of your XC2 riders on corrected time. So uh, a great run for him so far. We'll see if he's able to keep it up. And, uh, yeah, like I said, it it just kind of shows, you know, the XC1 guys are a little more cautious, uh, especially when you get somebody like Bryson with as much racecraft as he has. Get up front, kind of chill that first lap, take your time, let the pace sort itself out, and then uh, after that you'll, you'll go ahead and uh, – Lay the, lay the coal to it, that's and that's it. exactly what he's done. Uh, Jordan Berg has checked in now down in that 17th place spot in the overall, so still a solid run for him Him up inside the top 20 overall. Two riders in the top 20 overall out of that College A class showing you just how big of a stick those guys are swinging this year. Love to see it. Here we go, mile marker number two, entering the monster mile. B. Neal and Wyatt Wilkin, the young man who said, I've got something to prove today. And so far, so good. Adam McGill One closing it three. back up. And there is 521. So it looked like Real he was starting men. to stretch out a bit. There is Chris Borch. They're still in that number four spot looking good. This guy knows how to pick lines. I mean, yep. he, to him, he can pick lines and make moves like that in his sleep. Hunter Hart there and pressure behind Hunter Hart. Look like Walker Fowler and Austin Abney really starting to uh, put some pressure on the number two machine of Hart. Johnny, uh, God bless you, because a brown guy, brown bike is what I saw right there. I, I noticed a few, I am picking up riding styles now. I've been doing it long enough, but I'm still nervous to even say it. And then Johnny confirms it. I'm like, okay, I got a few dialed, but not all of them. So, well, uh, thank you. Good another job. thing I caught there, and it could be it looked like they might have just come out of some standing water. Uh, both Walker Fowler and uh, Austin Abney had a lot of steam coming out of their machines. Yeah. And that can happen when you're close behind, following close, you get that radiator packed up. Uh, they had more steam or smoke, if you will coming off those machines than any of the riders in front of them definitely something their mechanics and uh you know their crew will want to keep an eye on and make sure they try to keep those machines as as cleaned out and as cool as possible because this is uh even though it is a rain shortened race possibly or sorry yeah. it is rain yeah. short hour and a half uh you know we don't know what the actual finish time is they're aiming for an hour and a half yep. so you know it could be a little short of that could be a little long of that still a very long time if you're uh running on a packed up radiator or building a lot of clutch heat uh you can do damage to the machine Looking like at the moment, Neil just etching it out just a little bit. I think the mover right now is Adam McGill. Look yeah, at that. Yeah, that's what He's I was just about to say. Third is, is closing quickly. He's going after that young buck up there. That's a lapped rider. I lapped saw you get rider, all excited yeah. there, Zach. Lapped rider pulling over. He he heard the uh, he heard that Bryson Neal was going to be locked in and clocked <laughs> in, and he didn't want any part of going to work with Bryson. And I see that rider jumping back in behind Chris Borch. That will definitely present an obstacle for the group behind him, which is Hunter Hart, Walker Fowler, and Austin Abney. But, you know, that guy can't sit there all day and wait for everybody to come by. Once he sees an opening, he hops back out there and tries to get himself a little further down the trail. 
We're just over the hour mark in this one, due in in about 20 minutes. So I anticipate, Johnny, I would say, uh, they check in next time, we'll probably get the white flag. I don't recall seeing the two lap card, but again, that is a courtesy, not necessarily something we've got to put out there. Well, it, it's interesting because if they're running 26 That's minute laps, saying, like we're gonna end up being about an hour 46, hour 50? Yeah, so um, we're, we're going to be close in there. Yeah, I mean, now keep in mind, the, the white flag and the uh, two-lap card true. are a courtesy. So technically, we're not throwing this out there. But, you know, if they've reached that hour and a half elapsed time, they yeah. could throw a checkered flag. I'm certain that with the conditions seeming, at least from what we're seeing, kind of maintaining, um, and it's not raining, I, I think we likely will see. We can check in with our timing and scoring officials. But it seems to be that they're likely kind of working towards a four-lap race, but that's for them to decide, not that's us. Right. We want to always clarify that. We're here to hype up the race, talk about the action we see on screen. We leave the rules, the timing, the decisions like that to the officials in the booth. I will only back whatever Johnny said first. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard from that, too. I got you. All right, there we go. So Bryson Neal still leading the way in this one, folks. If you're at home and just joining us, you are watching a slightly damp uh, specialized GNCC from here at Aonia Pass MX in Washington, Georgia, the general GNCC. And uh, Bryson Neal has uh, two wins so far in 2024, uh, two-time champion, and uh, on his way to looking like possibly a, a shot at another win here today definitely too early to call but as we said earlier zach this guy has not put a wheel wrong so far he's led he's had not would, would we call it pressure from wyatt wilkin or just kind of we've had a shadow well you know i'm, I'm glad that you bring that up because like we said uh wyatt wilkin a sophomore in the class the the guy's no slouch right he's had some great performances he's got speed uh he's been working on getting the fitness to where he can do, go the entire duration of the race but i'm sure bryson neal has probably had the ability to glance back at some point or another maybe he is getting a pit board hey, you got Wilkin behind you. How much of an alarm do you think that sets off in Bryson's head? Even though he's a second or two behind him, do you think it's like, all right, that's Wyatt Wilkin, like more than likely he's going to fall off the pace. Do you think he would have the same sense of urgency if it was Walker Fowler? I don't think that we're seeing full on necessarily sprint, but obviously the pace is fast enough that it's shaken Adam McGill off the back, and uh, now Chris Borich actually has worked up to the back. And look at that. Uh, Walker Fowler has gotten around Hunter Hart and is now up to the number five spot, and there is Austin Abney back there in seventh behind Hart who is still there in sixth. Man, this is really starting to heat up, folks. We're going to get some bar bang in action. We got Ken Hill there snapping all the shots they as they come me. by, and it's uh, this one's really going to come down to the wire, folks. There we go. We're going to get a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back here in just a few Back to the specialized General GNCC. to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best. Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. ontrackschool.com, check it out. 30 minutes and two laps, let's go racing. Full contact. Look at that lady. Oh, 
the podium tier. I don't think any atmosphere can match it. Nothing quite like Pro Motocross. We've been there since the very beginning. 20 left, the main event, the Mazda Blast of Air. Organizing the industry and building champions. <laughs> 100 years of defending your rights to ride into the future. Community, family, teamwork. It's what we have stood on for over a decade. Hauling might be what we do at the surface, but it's much deeper than that. Because what you need matters. When you need a haul, give us a call at 724-852-4. Why am I in the middle? Oh. For 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, we at JD Enterprises are prepared to serve you. And welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. Myself, Johnny Gallagher, Zach Heron in the booth. Uh, we've got a little bit of everything today. We threw all the riders in the Yahtzee shaker. We threw it out. It's a mutter. Things are going crazy. B. Neal leading out front. you got the young sophomore Wyatt Wilkin in the two spot. And then we're kicking it old school back there with uh, Adam McGill and Chris Borch going back and forth. Johnny, this is as good as it gets at GNCC. You're exactly right. I mean, we've got a mix of the young guns up front. We've got our current and defending champion in the middle. Mix, and, uh, you know, it's it's really shaken out, and we've got so much action going on, it's just hard to keep up with it all. And Zach, I think, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I think we got Jackson out there doing the, some reporting for us, maybe at the Monster Mile. Yeah, absolutely. We've got him standing by, and it uh, looks like you guys have got him on screen as well. Jackson, how are things looking down there? Man, it is looking rough. As you can see, we're in the Monster Mile. A flowing creek down there they're having to go through on the back side of that creek. It is very rutted up, and the mud is super deep. Once you enter the Monster Mile right here, you have to go over the river, and that is when things start getting very, very hard packed. We have a really slick corner right here showing that Georgia red clay, and then on the back side of it, they enter into a lot more ruts. So I'll try to find some more spots on the track. Back to you guys. Yeah, thanks, Jackson. Absolutely brutal conditions out there. Uh, you're seeing a little bit of everything. We're seeing the slop, we're seeing the ruts, and we're actually seeing some of that shiny hard pack now as well in a couple of these spots. I mean, Johnny, you name it as far as soil conditions go, we got a little bit of it here at the General. Yeah, and I think a lot of us kind of anticipated this happening. I mean, with the rain that we had, uh, obviously, earlier in the week, kind of made things a little soggy when everybody's pulling. You can kind of see the tracks from everybody getting to where their camp spot and their parking spot is for the weekend. But then the sun came out, got a little windy, things started to dry up. And there really is a hard base under this. And last night, obviously, we got that rain made for the water that we're seeing kind of sitting around on the facility. But as they dig down, they're churning up that uh, red Georgia clay that uh, Mike Penland was talking about earlier. And he gave us that new nomenclature that we're going to use quite often of slicker and snot on a doorknob. And uh, that's exactly what that red clay is when you add just the perfect amount of moisture to it. So, so many, I did see, wanted to give it a little shout out earlier, a little bit of dust kicking up over near the motocross track there. I saw it. Somebody posted on the social medias. They posted a video. So it has to be true. I saw it on the internet. So translation, if you complained and didn't come to Georgia, you're missing out. Yep. And, and honestly, you kind of are. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, mean it's, it's been a good race day. It well, really has. You know, don't get me started, Mikey. But I understand. You, you read these I, I was things, poking the bear. I you read it. these things online, and, and you know, we you just never know what's going to happen. They were calling for possibly six inches of rain. Yeah. We got yeah. roughly an inch. So we got one-sixth. Today's a mudder, no question about sure. it. This is a mud race, but we're not seeing bikes breaking down. We're not seeing guys get buried. You know, most people are going to be able to drive right out of the facility after the race today, and the track is going to be exponentially better for yep. tomorrow's two-wheeled AT or bike race. So if you're at home and you were thinking, hey, I'm not coming because, you know, it's going to be a mudder and you race a dirt bike, get in the truck. Drive down here. Yep. It's going to be a good racetrack for tomorrow, and it just goes to show you can't believe everything that you hear. That's true. But what you can't believe, Bryson Neal, it's number one, true. Phoenix Racing Yamaha, out front, laying it down, still has that trailer, the 621 of <laughs> Wyatt Wilkin, right there, man. He just can't shake him. He keeps picking the pace up. And, uh, you know, to answer your question from earlier, Zach, you said, do you think he's concerned when he sees Wyatt Wilkin? He probably wasn't, but he's kind of starting to think probably, hey, what's going on? I can't shake this guy. That is, I believe Bryson already came by there on camera. That is... I'm not sure what we just saw there. Did we see a new leader? Did 
I'm not totally sure. I thought we might have seen Bryson without goggles. That's what I was looking at. If at first. that's first and second on screen, then that is Wyatt Wilkin out front. We'll see if we can get confirmation. We may have a new leader. I was just about to say that gap looked different, you know, significantly different than from Bryson to Wyatt before trying to get the official word on it. So that is Wyatt Wilkin. That is Wyatt Wilkin. He's got a neck brace. Bryson Neal does not wear a neck brace. And that is Bryson Neal in the second spot. Folks, we've got a new leader. Wow. Wyatt Wilkin has taken over the lead. Bryson Neal in the number two spot for the first time since we caught him on camera pretty late into lap one. Uh, we have a new leader, and it's it's Wyatt Wilkin out front. Well, now maybe Bryson Neal should be concerned. I was about to say, yeah, uh, all of a sudden the game has changed because not only is Wilkin in front of him, but Wilkin is put a little bit between the two of them. And it did look like, did Neil have goggles on or not? I it did not look tell. like he did. And the one thing that is advantage Neil right now is now it is Wyatt Wilkin that has to make all the passes on these lapped riders, has to choose the lines, but he looks pretty comfy up there. Bryce Neal definitely able to keep pace. It's not like Wyatt Wilkin is running away, but without goggles, you know, that was a great point, Zach. It makes it very challenging for Bryce Neal to get up close enough to really make a move without just taking absolute buckets of roost to the eyes. Talk with uh, Levi Cohen after Big Buck, and we talked about how well Josh Merritt had done, and he said, give it time. My guy Wyatt Wilkins is going to be up there. I don't even know if, if Levi Cohen or even Wyatt Wilkins knew it would be this kind of situation. Oh, and a broke down rider. They have to split the gap right there. Neil going on the outside. Can he make it happen? Yes, he can. Uh, let me tell you what happened right there. Wyatt Wilkin unfortunately realized he, when he went outside there, he had left the gap open. Yep. And the only way for him to get back onto the track, he kind of had to go around the banner there. That's why he checked up and let Bryson Neal go in front of him. Knew he didn't want to gain an advantage. Uh, seemed like he kind of self-corrected the mistake he made. There was a lapped rider stuck in those ruts. And that seems to be exactly what happened right there. Well, the way Bryson Neal's riding now, I think uh, Wyatt Wilkin certainly has his attention. Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, and these lapped riders are about to have uh, a serious attention grabber when they've got two of the fastest guys in the world just absolutely going by them at Ma what's the word? Mock Jesus. Mock uh, Jesus, yes. <laughs> they are absolutely flying, pushing the pace, and they've pulled away from Adam McGill and Chris Borch behind them. Uh, but why Wilkin able to put the hooks into Bryson Neal and not letting him get out of sight. So the race clock at, uh, at the moment on screen showing them an hour and 13 minutes. At this point, like you said, the hooks are the hooks are in. Do you think why it's in this all the way to the finish? Yeah, I mean, I think as far as we know, we think this is going to be a four-lap race. We're trying to get some confirmation on that. If that is the case, we will see a white flag waving when they check in at the completion of this lap here. And honestly, just about five, six minutes here. Uh, so... <laughs> We're down to a white flag. I mean, I think if Wyatt Wilkin has, has kind of been able to tag along this far, and actually we did just see him lead for a little bit, I think uh, it's very reasonable to believe that uh, he could be in this one for the duration all the way to the finish. And I can't help but remember what you said about halfway between, uh, halfway through the last lap. Wilkin, kind of like you said, all of a sudden he's got to start leading the charge against new lines, the charge against new lappers. He's still in a good spot, and we haven't hit your mark yet, Johnny. Could that well, be some strategy? I, hold on. Now, let me clarify one thing. I think the strategy is completely different if you're Wyatt Wilkin. Uh, I don't know Wyatt that well, but this guy, this is a guy that has not yet had a podium. So sitting in the number two spot, chasing the two-time champion, Bryson Neal, of course, if the opportunity presents itself, he's going to go for it. But I can't see him absolutely just going full send and potentially throwing away what looks not not yet, but at that point would look to be a pretty solid second place finish in hopes for a win. Um, you know, you, you're not going to take those crazy bonsai chances. Uh, you know, if you've got, you're not going to settle for second, but you're going to be a little less aggressive in the push for first. Um, in, in my opinion, I mean, Wyatt will run his own race and do what he. There we go. Four lap race is confirmed. So uh, this one on the clock, we were told, you know, it, it was going to be possibly shortened a little bit. Looking like it's going to go just about the duration. I think we're going to see an hour and 50 ish minutes. Um, so we'll see what it is when they check in and see the white flag waving. But uh, not sure if we'll see Bryson Neal, I'm assuming, going to stop for goggles because we see he does not have goggles on. They will make uh, two more trips, but one that we would likely see him stop this lap if he was going to go ahead and get some uh, some fresh goggles for some clear vision. Nice Kanadi banner, though. Those guys, you know, giving uh, $250 to the whole shot of word, uh, which today was the man still sitting there in second, Wyatt Wilkins. So picked up 250 bucks and uh, potentially looking to uh, pick up the first podium of his career. Maybe a win. You just never know. 
we heard uh, we heard in Wyatt's interview earlier. He says I don't really like the mud, but for some reason I always seem to do well. And I feel like that's one of the things that you hear a lot of times. Riders, especially the youth kids, they're like, no, I'm not. I'm not excited for the mud, and I wasn't happy to be here. But for some reason, I'm up on the podium. What is that? Just a mentality thing? I mean, luck of the draw? Uh, I don't think it's luck of the draw. I think it's what happens with uh, you know a lot of experience. Uh, I had the the kind of uh, reputation as being a mutter throughout my career and people would always be like oh you're probably doing a rain dance you really like when it gets muddy man it's a lot of work like it's you're I was never more tired not necessarily physically but m then mentally than after a mud race you're just kind of on edge the whole race you're trying to stay calm when everything around you is just in utter chaos you know it's anarchy out there in the mud holes and you're trying to pick the right line and, and you just got to keep that mindset it's so exhausting it's very physically demanding because the machine's so heavy your equipment's so heavy uh, it, uh, the cleanup afterwards you're already dreading that you're gonna have two to three days of cleanup after an event like this but when the results come it makes it all worthwhile and, and i almost always would uh have far above average for myself race results when the conditions were like this so you basically tell yourself you like it even though you know you don't uh i tell you one thing this is the finish line right here i heard so about this earlier today. a little well it was actually Pandemonium. after this where it got worse oh um but that said I looked to me, Bryce and Neil got around two lapped riders there when we were kind of mm. going away from that camera shot. They pulled back in in front of, uh, they pulled back in in front of Wyatt Wilkin, and he was able to open up just a little bit of a gap. But it looks like Wyatt already on the charge and trying to close that gap back down. Yeah, and I mean, this has been the kind of action we've had all day long. We had crazy stuff going on in the youth race as well. Uh, Johnny, you were standing right by me at the finish of the WXC race. I mean, absolutely crazy stuff going on. Uh, Jessica Elioff, once again, getting the job done. Uh, talk about somebody that's been able to do it in a little bit of this and a little bit of that as far as conditions go. Uh, we were actually able to catch up with Jessica and talk to her before this weekend's racing, uh, and then we'll get into the action we saw today. Jessica carrying that big number one plate. How does that feel? Does it add any pressure to you? You know, it does. I, I try not to think about it too much because, you know, I don't like to get in my own head about it. But, yeah, I mean, carrying the number one plate is a little bit more pressure. But I'm just going to try to go out there and have fun and do me and do my best, you know. So. All right. Well, Jessica, like you said, might be a muddy weekend here. How do you feel about the mud? You know, I have a love-hate relationship with the mud. I've done really good in the mud before, and I've done really bad. So I'm going to, you know, I've been working on patience and just kind of taking my time and riding my own race and not worrying about who's behind me and just, you know, taking smart lines and trying to make smart decisions out there because sometimes slower is faster and try to pick the smooth line and not get too tired throughout the whole thing and just try to be smart. All right, guys, that's Jessica Elioff. You can find her in the WXC class. Sometimes slower is faster. I love that, and that seems to be uh, a lot of what we saw throughout the day today. But, Johnny, you were noticing something about the number one while we were watching that interview. What, what were you saying? Yeah, it looked like he was really trying to put a sprint in, and they're coming very close to the GBC Tires pit stop area where there would be fresh goggles waiting for him if that's what he were wanting. I'm assuming he's going to want or need a set to uh, finish out this last lap of racing. I mean, you can do it without, but you're just taking such a chance of, you know, something coming up, getting in the eyes, and, and not to mention a painful couple days afterwards. So if he can get enough of a gap that he's not going to lose the lead to Wyatt Wilkin, I think, I really do think, we'll see him stop in and get a fresh set of goggles. Do you think we see any kind of, uh, like, water on the face, wipe off? Obviously, in something like this, you almost get painted with mud, then you throw a set of goggles on it. How long till that's just bouncing around in your new set? Uh, well, it looks like this. They're checking in, and it looked like Bryce Neal had goggles on this time, so he may have already stopped. But that is the gap right there. It looks like Wyatt Wilkin got himself some fresh goggles as well. Bryce Neal checked in. Wyatt Wilkin checked in. Mikey Wayne is going to give us the gap. 12 seconds, almost 12 flat, 12.074. So Wilkin's still in it. Now it's going to be interesting, as we saw, as you were talking about, Johnny Bryson really, really pushing it, as we see on Racer TV right there, still kind of the same MO. And now he's got clear vision. This is going to be a dangerous man. I don't think he's going to – this is going to be that sprint mode by B. Neal this last lap, at least – while it's safe to do so. I think you're 100% right, and I think right now, if he can get out of sight from Wyatt Wilkin and does not run in any, you know, uh, bottlenecks or lap riders to hold him up, 
I, I don't want to say I hate to say it. Um, I just like to see good racing. Sure. I think this might be the nail in the coffin on this one. Um, 12 seconds, the biggest gap we've seen all day. But the biggest thing, he's now out of sight. Wyatt Wilkin no longer having the advantage of being able to see the light lines that Bryson is taking. He's got to choose his own lines. Looks like the track mostly, the lines are holding up, meaning they're not changing from the lap before. But there is what you see on screen. Bryson Neal all the way to the right of your screen there. And Wyatt Wilkin was still coming down the hill having to make the left and uh, work his way into this camera shot. So, again, 12 seconds and possibly that gap maybe even opening up a little bit. Hey, just got a little bit of insight there from Jackson Burrell. He said Bryson Neal came by. He had the goggles on, but in his pit, he was pointing at his pointing at his eyes as if there was some kind of issue with the eyes. He said he didn't take anything from the pit, but was letting them know something was going on. So it well, sounds like there's some underlying stuff going on. I'll tell you, with ATVs, Zach, you know, you roost yourself so much. One of our strategies, and we kind of tried to keep it quiet, but I think people have picked up onto it, goggles in multiple places around the track. On an ATV, you know, you cannot sometimes make it a full lap on a set of goggles. So that could have been just speculating a crew, a message to the crew saying like, hey guys, um, you know, I want goggles. Yeah, this pair's fine right now, but get out there and give me some goggles because I don't want to have to ride any of this course without without goggles protecting my eyes. It's just, it's so difficult when you're splashing up off your front tires and, you know, for lack of a better way to explain it, roosting yourself. Just shows how far ahead these guys are thinking, talking and communicating with the teams, communicating as far as, like you said, dropping the hammer, try to get the gap so that he could get the goggles. It just really shows how intelligent these riders are, as if they're not busy doing enough. Yeah, and what's happening right now, Bryson Neal's starting to get into lapped riders, but you can see he's got enough of a gap on Wyatt Wilkin that he's able to make the pass on those lapped riders, and they pull back in in front of Wyatt Wilkin. That yeah, right there you see on screen, Wyatt Wilkin stuck behind another lapper and not two lapped riders in between. Look at this, folks. Walker Fowler, the 723 machine, up to that number three spot and showing only eight seconds behind Wyatt Wilkin. Is that correct? That's what we got on timing and scoring, and I thought I was getting a glance of somebody behind Wyatt Wilkin. I couldn't tell if it was a lap rider trying to keep that pace and move. That may actually be Walker. the battle we're seeing on screen. I looked away for a minute, so correct, Zach, I don't know if you were watching that whole time. I think the rider in the center of the screen may be Wyatt Wilkin, and if we can get a little clearer shot, that riding style behind looks a lot like our seven-time champion, Walker Fowler. Is. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think you're right. I'm looking to see if I catch any glimpse of Bryson in front of them. A little slow rolling through there. Yeah, that's a deep section right there. Well, Wyatt Wilkin is getting uh, quite the uh, the course in ATV racing here today. He has led at one point. He's been battling with Bryson Neal. He was able to kind of key off of Bryson Neal. And now, uh, another lesson, he gets to uh, go out there and be tracked down by a man with the second most all-time wins on an ATV in GNCC and Walker Fowler, who you know is, uh, if, if a second place position is there, Walker's going for it. Well, let me uh, point something out, because I... I'd really like to pat myself on the back. Yes. If you remember <laughs> about a lap ago, I said it looked like the trio of Walker Fowler, yeah. Hunter Hart, Austin Abney on a roll. They all three have moved Bingo. up spots in the overall. Yeah. It just looked like that group was working together and pushing each other. Uh, Chris Borch and Adam McGill were riding very well, but they're kind of seesawing off the back of the leaders there. Looked like they maybe just didn't quite have the pace of the group in front of them or behind them. And uh, right now it's looking to prove that way. But, man, we still got a lot of racing action left, and none of these positions are set in stone. No, not, not at all. So too many Wiley veterans back there. It was specifically Walker Fowler. And, yeah, Hart having a great ride. Austin Abney having a fantastic ride as well. Looked like that was a lap rider maybe getting out of the way. Yeah, that was, look at this. Walker Fowler around yep. Wyatt Wilkin. That was Fowler up into second and Wyatt Wilkin in third as they just came through. So now, if you're Bryson Neal and you look back, you're going to see a little bit different machine. Uh, he does still have a pretty comfortable gap, looking like it's 10-plus seconds as they were on screen there. But it is now, at least for the moment, a different rider up into second place. It is your seven-time champ, the 723, on that WFR Yamaha, and uh, he's on the move. And Walker, a rough start for him. Uh, you know, he's really had to kind of work his way up through the pack in this one. So you can always wonder what if. Hey, if I had a good start, if, if, if. But he's right there, and we've got 20 minutes left in this race. Uh, Walker Fowler actually turned the fastest lap time in lap number three, a 25-3-3, whereas Neal was a 25-3-7. Uh, we may have just seen Walker Fowler almost 
make a pass that it can't be Bryson Neal already. He ran right up the gut of the deepest section right there, and whoever that is in front of him, if it is Bryson Neal, they came wheel to wheel side by side in the rider that was there first, which may be speculating. It could be Walker Fowler there in the point position, and that could be Wyatt behind him. This, uh, but I think that is your top three on screen. Bryson Neal leading the way. Walker Fowler second, and Wyatt Wilkin in third. We almost just saw, a, and now we're seeing Bryson Neal making contact with a lap rider in front of him, and I believe that is the number one of Neal out front and the 7-2-3 of Fowler in the number two spot, and almost just, that is, I saw the camel back. Walker Fowler in second is right on the rear wheels of Bryson Neal. Things have escalated quickly. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen, as if the elements aren't enough. Oh, a little hang-up right there for Walker Fowler in that hole, as is... Uh, that would be Wyatt Wilkin, I believe. Yeah. Shout, out, shout out to him. He's still right there. These are three guys all in the same quarter, all battling, and we never would get to see this without the Yamaha Racing Live drone. This is stuff yeah. we'd hear about after the fact. Whoa, Wyatt Wilkin has come to a stop. He is off his oh, machine. No. Looking down, something wrong with the 620. Oh, he was now just stuck. Going. He got going, but he lost a lot of time to the leaders. He is no longer on the train. It is Bryson Neal leading the way and Walker Fowler in second. Hunter Hart in the number four position of note, 24 seconds back. So pretty healthy gap in between him and Wyatt Wilkin, but Wyatt cannot afford another mistake like that or Hunter Hart going to be right there on the rear grab bar. There we see there's four machines. The third and fourth machines are your leader of Bryson Neal and the 723 of Walker Fowler sitting in the number two spot coming up on lap traffic. And these guys are going to want to make a hole because if not, man, they're going to get uh, kind of moved out of the way, if you will. Move or be moved. Oh, look at that. That oh, was almost mercy. contact there. Walker Fowler trying to get around that lap rider, him not knowing he's there, coming back into the trail, and uh, almost contact made. Again, another lap rider coming into play here. This is getting interesting, folks. Oh, I would love to be inside the helmet of Bryson Neal, Walker Fowler, and Wyatt Wilkin right now. And uh, benefit big, uh, the winner in that one, going to be Wyatt Wilkin, able to get back up in the fight with these guys couple of these sections there's it's just clearly only one line really that the riders can choose and it stocks or it stacks the class back up so much looks like that one lap rider trying to get out of the way oh and one one rider having to go way wide I, I think that was actually Walker Fowler trying to possibly make a pass there wow, that's deep. Ooh, one of the riders did just cannot tell was that Walker Fowler that just had an issue there Hard to tell from the drone here, folks. But somebody getting sideways in the water and coming off of the machine. We, we're full spectator mode at this point, waiting on uh, figuring out which guy is doing what out there. I, Whoever I, fell back to third, I believe, may have gotten stuck back there or had some issues. So I don't know if that was Wilkin again. I think what we're seeing on screen is still your leader and second place of Neil and Fowler. It looks to be, here we see, this is okay. a, a live Finally. camera shot. So that is Bryson Neal out front and that is Walker Fowler in second. So your top two are through there at the three mile marker and still about 18 minutes of racing left. And these guys are absolutely throwing down out here, boys. I tell you something that Walker Fowler said to me on the podium that stuck with me was the fitness it's getting there. It's not quite where I want. And we saw Walker put it on, you know, one heck of a fight with Bryson in the early parts. Have a great finish. But I think as time goes on, be on the lookout for Walker at the end of this race. And it uh, looks like we're going to take a glance at how this race has played out so far. Look at this. I mean, just oh we talk about how easy those top guys make it look. That's what the rest of the field is going through. There's Wyatt Wilkin leading the way. Bryson Neal behind him. He momentarily did have the lead. And then Bryson able to uh, make the pass back. We see it on screen. Wyatt going out and around a rider that was stuck there and realizing, hey, I need to give up that position. I got in a line I couldn't get out of. Uh, no harm, no foul there. He gave the position back. Uh, and then we see Bryson Neal still leading the way, coming in, getting some fresh goggles. And then uh, if you watch the left side of your screen right here, you see White Wilkin having an issue. Almost looks like that machine just stalled, uh, but he was able to get it refired and get going still in that third place spot. So high drama on the last lap for Wyatt Wilkin. Bryson Neal still leading the way. Walker Fowler still there solidly in that second place spot. B. Neal out front. Walker Fowler in second. Wilkin back in third. We'll be right back after this. 
You know, when I take the bike out like this, all my stresses just melt away. I hear that. This bad boy can fix anything. Yeah, tough day at work. Nice cruiser sort you right out. When I'm riding, I'm not even thinking about my painful cavity. Oh, you shouldn't ignore that. And every time I get stressed about having to pay my bills, I just hop on the bike, man. Oh, come on, man. You gotta pay your bills. You don't have to worry about anything when you're protected by America's number one motorcycle insurer. Well, you definitely do. Those things aren't related, so... Ah, yee! Oh, that is a vibrating pain. It's a big world out there. How do you choose to see it? When you crave the long canyons, rocky trails, rutted tracks, and lonely highways, they become a part of you. Podiums and personal records, we choose it all. Because life is about moving and feeling. It's about being connected to the adventure. Some just never pull the trigger. They keep waiting, wondering what it means to wander. It's a big world out there. You just need to ride where you belong. Whatever you drive, however you drive. Amsoil specially engineers lubricants to maximize power, performance, and protection in your vehicles. So you can work hard and play hard with confidence. Order online at amsoil.com. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. You can save hundreds on car and motorcycle insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And hey, welcome back to GNCC Live here on RacerTV.com. And well, it's been a good day if you are Bryson Neal White, Welcome Walker Fowler, etc. If you haven't, well, that's kind of what today has looked like. I think he was towing what looked like three <laughs> bikes at the same yeah, time. Those were three youth um, riders earlier today. But, yeah, just it's been carnage. It's been crazy. This race has given us a little bit of everything as well. We've had multiple leaders. Uh, Wyatt Wilkin getting the lead for a little bit. We now have the bridal but battle between Bryce and Neal and Walker Fowler to close it out. Uh, don't forget, we got upcoming broadcasts. We're going to be at Camp Coker. It is going to be sunny and 75 there and no rain. I'm just putting that in the universe now. Uh, apparently we're going, oh, okay, uh, ATVs, and then, of course, bikes on Sunday. And then the Old Gray, a new facility for us uh, over there in Tennessee. Yeah, we got a lot of racing action coming your way, and this one far from over here yet today. We've got at least a handful of riders still at a shot with the win uh, all the way back. When you look at those time gaps back, I mean, we don't have any big gaps all the way. I mean, only 24 seconds back to the fourth-place ride of Hunter Hart. Uh, Austin Abney only 14 seconds behind him. Chris Bortz still only five seconds back. So, folks, turning back the clock today, Chris Bortz putting in one heck of a ride. Currently sitting in that number six spot, but still within sight of a podium position and a lot of action left to be had yet today.
Got to give a shout out to Brody Lee as well. Uh, the 333 uh, Honda still leading that college A class after three laps, and he sits 11th in the overall and is leading uh, on adjusted time all the, the entire XC2 class. And a big shout out to Dylan Walraven, the yep. 622 machine, leading the way in that XC2 class ahead of Grayson Eller and Braxton Gross, your round, winner from last round. Alex Elioff, fourth place in that XC2 class. So his wife Jessica getting the win earlier today, and he himself out there running in the number four spot in that XC2 class. Well, Johnny, we are now uh, under 10 minutes away from seeing the checkered flag in this one. Um, all these crazy stories we've had. B. Neal, a perfect 2-0 and o coming into it. He's being challenged, though, here late by Walker Fowler. And that is exactly what you're seeing on screen right now. The number one of Bryson Neal out front leading the way. The 7-2-3 of Walker Fowler giving chase. And uh, no quarter asked nor given. These guys throwing everything that they have at it. Uh, this was a battle we wanted to see a week. We've been wanting to see, but uh, we want, really thought we were going to see a week ago in the sands of Florida. Just never quite materialized. And uh, today looking like uh, kind of the opposite. Walker Fowler led early in Florida. Bryson Neal able to get around him and pull a little bit of a gap. And uh, today, Bryson Neal kind of led from very early on, momentarily giving up the lead to Wyatt Wilkin. But Walker Fowler absolutely buried back in the pack, has methodically worked his way up through and now within sight of the two-time and defending champion and putting on the pressure putting on the pressure if there's one guy out there you don't want behind you i gotta think it's the uh, 723 of walker fowler but also in the same breath if there's a guy up to the task i think it's price and neil uh but this is this is where you want to be if you're well you want to be out front if you're walker at this point but uh there's no gap the gap's gone it's mono e mono look at that it's like slot car racing johnny uh, as a matter of fact, Jackson Burrell was talking. He's been out and about uh, on the track, and he said, guys, there are some spots in this. If you get out of that main race line, you're not moving. You're stuck. It's it's quicksand. It's it's uh, several inches of just mud that's going to suck you in. Oh, Walker Ooh. getting a little sideways. That's yeah. going to cost him some time. We saw him get wide in uh, that corner before and then kind of trying to make up some ground, pushing it deep in, getting, uh, getting sideways in that second corner. So a couple of costly mistakes there back to back. Uh, Walker Fowler trying to get right to the rear wheels of Bryce Neal to have a chance to uh, really kind of get up there and make a push to try to wrestle the lead away. But uh, he's having to really push the pace, and it's leading to tiny little mistakes. But now it looks like he's already starting to close the gap back up. So both of these guys, I really believe, throwing everything they have at it. But, yes, you're exactly right. Cannot get off the beaten line in some of these sections, or you'll get just bogged down. And uh, remember how slow they were going through that section yes. on lap one. Right now, just absolutely throwing caution to the wind, throwing everything they have at it. And, uh trying to get the job done. We'll see if we can stay at this camera shot long enough to see if it is still the 621 of Wyatt Wilkin there in the number three spot, or has Hunter Hart been able to make the pass? We saw Wyatt having a small issue. Not sure if the bike stalled or got stuck, uh, but he lost about five, six seconds only. But what's happened, I believe, after that is the, uh, the pace of the front two has just been absolutely intense, and nobody else quite able to match it. That's a lap rider there. Uh, Actually, looked like it might have been Kevin Yoho, um, possibly from our Vet A class. Not certain, uh, but we see on screen it is Wyatt Wilkins still in number three spot, hanging on to, I believe that was Wilkin. Uh, almost looked like it could have been Austin Abney, but I, I do think it was Wyatt Wilkins still there in the number three spot. Back to the lead, battle for the lead. Bryson Neal leading the way out through the more open sections. Uh, we see we've got a uh, kind of Lucas Oil truck track or whatever they call yes. that there, off-road track. Uh, and those guys are staying off that today. <laughs> they probably want to preserve that for some future races, but uh, running around the edges of it. And Walker Fowler can see Bryson Neal. Bryson Neal taking a look over his shoulder, absolutely knows he's there. And uh, this is, at this point, Mikey, just a sprint to the finish line. That's it, sprint to the finish line. Can B. Neal stay perfect? Can Walker Fowler, Fowler click off a win? As a matter of fact, we haven't uh, brought it up in a while, but Walker Fowler, one win away from tying Chris Borch on the all-time wins list. Uh, so Walker Fowler still chasing some history in his career as uh, Bryson Neal picked up a, a couple of wins to start the season, is now two ahead of uh, Ironman Bob Sloan. So a couple all-time wins leaders uh, in your top five all-time Going head to head right here. Neil looking good right there. Let's see what line Fowler takes. Very similar line. And you can see this is kind of a seesaw. Seems like Walker makes a little mistake and Bryson able to pull away. Then Bryson having a little miscue. Walker able to close it back up. But these guys, I can tell you just by watching and knowing they're on the absolute edge right now, trying to fight for every single second. This is not a case of protecting a lead. They are both 
Bryce Neal sprinting to the finish. He's not trying to take good lines and keep Walker behind him. He's trying to run away. Walker Fowler doing everything that he can to match pace and stay as close as he can to Bryce Neal for an opportunity to hopefully, for him, make a pass. If you're Bryce Neal, you're doing everything right. Yeah. You just, you just got to keep doing it. If you're Walker Fowler, you need to find just that little something extra to try to get up next to him. And I got to tell you, I, my heart rate's starting to get elevated. Yeah, this is exciting. Same. This is a battle of two titans. And, man, I mean, we saw this so often. It's, oh, look at that. Walker Fowler able to jump that little section there. And look at how much time he made up. I really hope... We're going to see a wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle, and it's coming to fruition right now. Yeah, Bryce O'Neill had lit, dragged a little bit back there. Maybe a deep, deep hole he got into. And here comes Walker Fowler now all over the rear. Grab bar of Bryce O'Neill. Mono, a mono, different line choice. Nope, inside not going to pay off right there just yet. All right, Walker Fowler trying to set him up right here. It, it was weird. Bryce and Neal took a look back there. I think they both weren't sure. Maybe they went outside that tree, still within the legal boundaries of the course, but they kind of took a look at each other like, hey, which way are we supposed to go yeah. here? There was like a momentary pause and then right back to the action. So safe to say Bryce and Neal thinking about Walker Fowler. Walker obviously thinking about B. Neal in front of him. Oh, Neal gets hung up a bit. Here comes some lap traffic as well. How is this going to play out? Take a deep breath, Bryce and Neal. And look out, lap traffic. Here comes the freight train of B. Neal and Walker Fowler. Yeah, each of these guys having an advantage and a disadvantage at the same time. Bryce and Neal having the advantage of not having to eat Walker Fowler's roost. Walker Fowler having the advantage of Bryce and Neal having to be the first one to get around these lapped riders. One bad choice in lines. Uh, you know, one lapped rider going a direction you're not anticipating could really make a big difference at this point in the race. So here we go again. There's no clear path to the finish line now. Two more lappers in front of these guys. Let's see how B. Neal Oh, a little love tap. Hey, how you doing? From Walker Fowler to B. Neal. And back to work they go. Another lapper up here around the next turn. Man, these guys are just at a fever pitch right now. Everything they have being thrown at it. Just trying, Bryce and Neal trying to get to the finish line and not let Walker Fowler get a run on him. Walker Fowler trying everything up next to Bryson on uh, several occasions here. Just right inside him, right next to him. Just can't quite make the pass stick. And this is some excellent racing action we're getting to see here courtesy of our Yamaha Racing Live drone. B. Neal continues to stay out front. We're through the lappers now. His shadow is, wa is Walker Fowler. Good drive right there by Walker Fowler. More lap traffic coming up right here. They got to know B. Neal and Walker Fowler on their way. Meanwhile, we believe we still have Wyatt Wilkin back in the three spot battling with uh, Hunter Hart back there. De definitely want to give Wyatt Wilkin a shout out. For I mean, sure. It's been an awesome ride for him. If he can close this thing out in the podium position, that is just an absolutely phenomenal day for him. Would be a career best result and uh, was very much in the thick of this battle as recently as just a few miles ago before we saw just a minor setback. Don't know if it was a stall or kind of got hung up momentarily. Mikey, calm down. He can't make a pass there. It's a one-line section. All right. That's exactly. He's staying back. He's not getting too close to that lap rider. He knows that Walker Fowler cannot pass him. Waiting until they get to a point where there's a two-line section. See, that, to me, Walker Fowler missed an opportunity there. He could have potentially taken that other line and maybe tried to, uh, but he does the safe thing and follows Bryson through, and there they are on screen on the Aonia Pass motocross track. Bryson Neal leading the way, oh, clicking mercy. off. This is now down to the final not even miles, final sections of racetrack. Not a lot of passing opportunities left, but we're going to get to see them on screen if they happen. This is it, folks. Enjoy this. Nine miles in, the battle for the lead. Bryce and Neal out front, Walker Fowler in second. Oh, if you are down at the finish line, buckle up, buttercup. The freight train's on its way. The Bidwell Bullet and Walker Fowler trying to make it happen. Two Ohio boys. By the way, Wyatt Wilkin also from Ohio. I know, Johnny, you're from Ohio, too. I get it. So, I, I have nothing to do with this Ohio battle. I've been watching a, it. <laughs> having a great day. Uh, down here in Georgia. Can B. Neal hang on and stay perfect? Can Walker Fowler tie Chris Borich on the all-time wins list? So much at stake. This has been an absolutely sensational race. This is it. This is really the final sections of racetrack here. I mean, we're down to just a few turns before there will be a checkered flag waving. And right now, Bryce and Neal just able to match everything that Walker Fowler is throwing at him. Nothing in it, but Walker just not quite close enough to make a pass stick. All right, past pro row they go, and we are getting close now. Bryce and Neal just got to keep her on, well, at least two out of the four wheels, and bring it home. 
Under 30 seconds away. They are nearing this that is it. finish line. This is the final stretch of racetrack, folks. They got one more turn, and they'll be coming into the finish line chicanes. It looks like Bryson Neal is going to get it done, but he's got one more little muddy section. He's through, and here it is. Coming to the checkers, the Phoenix Racing Yamaha of Bryson Neal going to be perfect on the start of the 2024 season, grabbing win number three here at the Specialized General GNCC and crossing the line just behind him. It is the 723 of Walker Fowler coming across the line and uh, getting the job done there for that third place position or second place position. Sorry. Well, uh, Bryson Neal, normally a guy that after a race, he says, all right, another day at the office. Great job. Let me get that million dollar smile out and celebrate. Uh, this one, a little more amped up. Uh, that's got to get the adrenaline going, Johnny. Have a good battle like that with uh, with the man that he was chasing for so many years. Absolutely. I mean, these two, a lot of speculation coming into the season. You know, would Walker be able to bring the same intensity it had prior to his injury? We saw at the end of last season, you know, he was very good, but there were still a lot of questions. I think uh, between the last two races, these two have proven that they've got just a bit more than everybody else coming so close uh, here at the finish line, basically wheel to wheel coming through the final miles. And and uh, we'll wait and we'll watch. And it looks like we may. Was that White Wilkin that just checked in? Uh, live timing and scoring waiting on that to update. I don't. It was Wyatt Wilkin, first podium. Look at Third that. Third place overall. How sweet it must taste. The champagne for him is going to be just a yeah. little sweeter today. <laughs> That's right. So Wyatt Wilkin out here still checking off boxes. And, and man, Johnny, he got the lead today as well. Uh, earned that uh, position out in front and got to have that little taste. And once you get that taste, that builds into a thirst that you just you want it even more. Uh, so Wyatt Wilkin, boy, fantastic day. There he is on screen. Can't even really recognize him. You can see he's exhausted, head down. Uh, probably just overwhelmed with emotion. Surely exhausted, but uh, what a feeling. I mean, the first podium you get, at, you can see there it is, the fist pump, and he realizes it's done, it's real, nothing but smiles. Wyatt Wilkin on the box here today with a third place finish. What a day. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, a huge congratulations to him just in his sophomore season. See if we can get the, uh, a podium. Rundown um, looks like maybe we've got no, still nobody else. Three. So Waiting on Hunter oh, Hart. Oh, here we go. Hunter Hart has checked in a fourth place finish for him. Uh, Hunter Hart will finish one minute back from third place. Chris Borich, a top five. Solid day for Chris. Yeah, absolutely. The first top five for Chris in uh, a couple of years. So definitely a, a good solid run for him today. Was in the mix early and, uh, you know, keeping it all the way to the end there. Right on Hunter coming into the finish. So fifth place, good finish for him. And then uh, looks like our Austin sixth Abney. place rider, Austin Abney, Indiana boy, has gotten across the line. You know, just three Ohio guys. Uh, all right. And then, <laughs> and then New York, Pennsylvania, all Indiana. Right. Yeah, we got it, Mikey. No, great ride for Austin Abney, though, in sixth place. I uh, was very happy with his performance in the sand a week ago. Surely we'll be happy at this one today with a sixth place ride. Yeah, you know, honestly, give Austin a shout out before we throw it down for some interviews. Um, yeah, he's, he's had a pretty good season so far, you know, kind of quietly back there in those five, six, seven spots. So I think Austin got to feel good about how this season has started as we begin to head up a little further north into some more uh, familiar terrain. For, uh, for Austin Abney, but boy, how about it? Bryson Neal stays perfect. Uh, Walker Fowler finishes second, Wyatt Wilkin at third place, Hart fourth, and Borich fifth, and it sounds like Zach Heron stands by with our winner, Bryson Neal. Hey guys, I am down here with your winner. Bryson, you just said it, man. That's one to remember. Crazy conditions, crazy battles. Take us through it. Oh man, uh, you know, the, the, the first start for the first three corners was just chaos. You know, we was just getting bumper cars slamming into each other. Everyone's fighting for that good position. I believe I came into the woods third, and that was huge today. So um, I was able to uh, get pack, get in the second. And then Wyatt, was, uh, he before we got to the deep stuff, he actually pulled up and let me by. And um, at first, I thought I was happy about it. And then uh, as soon as I got to uh, picking the lines, man, the holes were nasty. Um, You'd go into some of these holes and it'd be fender deep and you couldn't tell from the surface from the first lap. I felt like our first lap took forever to get around, but literally just creeping through the holes and trying to pick your way through because, man, there were some monsters out there that you could swallow you up and uh, end your day. And uh, we, once we made it through lap one, lap two got easier. Every lap kind of got easier because the more you was out there, you kind of got more in tune with where you was, where you've been the last lap and previous before. And we had a lot of great people out there pointing the slides today, all the fans. So uh, 
Dude, I'm, I'm just, uh, this is, this one's awesome, you know, because uh, I feel like I've, I've been the underdog coming into mud races. People, I, I've kind of been known for just the dry, and uh, I've kind of been so poor on, on the mud races here lately, and I felt like I was the underdog coming in, and uh, it, this one really, really feels great, uh, because to get three wins to start the year and, and, and to get one in the mud like this, this means the world. This is awesome. It was a ton of fun to watch, for sure. Now, we see you got dirt around the eyes. We saw you there without goggles for a little bit. Talk about how crazy that is, trying to stay out of the roost how quickly you were able to get goggles back how key was that uh, goggles were huge today i think i went through four pair all, all four pair every lap i took a pair of goggles and um, as soon as i took them off just the fields the slop how wet it was you was just squinting the whole time you was just looking out of this eye then that eye just just trying to survive and uh, the mud was definitely the hardest part and uh, i feel for um all the guys who um in every row today that didn't get a good start and had to fight through that 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 was that was a rough one there you go, Bryce. So well, you didn't just survive. You came out on top, man. I know you're not doing it by yourself. Who do you need to thank? Uh, first, my, my whole team, uh, my dad, my fiance, Brooke, my uncle, Mike, everybody who comes to the races here, uh, Troy Edelblut, um, Wayne Eller, Luke Eller, David Eller, and the entire Phoenix Racing ATV Yamaha team. Uh, it's just been just a just kick kick butt to get three three uh, wins in a row to start the year. It's been awesome. This Yamaha ATV 20th edition is just, just absolutely rolling. So we really got a great package. I'd like to thank all my guys from back home, Justin Fallon, um, Troy Edelblut, um, my uncle Mike Gein, uh, Tyler Ward, Nathan who came uh, from Jackson, Ohio, came down and helped me out today, Wayne Eller and Luke Eller, all my guys who's out there fighting for me today, I appreciate you. Uh, I'd like to thank CST Tires, DWT Wheels, Tire Balls, Elka Shocks, Impact Solutions with Jay Goble, uh, Dan and Brandon and Adassa, uh, my heads, got a great start again, uh, two in a row, getting, getting better. Uh, thank you guys for the for the horsepower and the good starts and the, the and the exhaust. Um, everything's flawless there. Um, like to thank Hauser, Hauser A Arms, Walsh Components, Lone Star Components, Sunstar Chain Sprockets, uh, Wiseco Piston Kicked All Day, Anti Gravity Batteries, uh, Web Intake Cams, Cometic Gaskets. Um, I'd like to thank um, EKS goggles, 6D helmets. Um, Moose Racing Gear was phenomenal today. Um, Parts Unlimited. Um, ODI handlebars, uh, Works Connection, Henson Racing, um, SSI decals, and uh, the Evans Evans coolant came in clutch today. So uh, appreciate you guys and thank everyone out there on the trail. There you go, guys. Rain or shine, the number one can get the job done. Well, there you go, Mikey. I'll tell you what, my big takeaway from that interview is Bryce O'Neill super pumped with that win. You know, we, we hear... Ooh. We hear, uh, you know, just the excitement in his voice uh, showing you how excited he is uh, to get that win. Talking about the interesting part was, he, Mikey, he said he felt like he was the underdog coming into this race. Coming off yeah, two back-to-back -back like, championships, two wins in a row. He said, laugh. hey, man, I was the underdog coming into today. Whatever it took, a little bit extra excitement in his voice today. You could tell he was really pumped to get the win. Yeah, um, it, it, interesting. You know, you oh, you think a guy, like, as many wins as they get, it's kind of like, all right, another day at the office. But they've always got something they're, like, consciously working for. Uh, sounds like Jackson Burrell stands by with our second-place finisher, Walker Fowler. Yeah, thanks, guys. I'm here with your second place, Walker Fowler. Walker, man, a muddy one out there today. You pushed hard. You were able to come out with a second place. Take us through your race. I uh, just should have went to the inside on the start where McGill was and uh, just had a bad start. Man, uh, you can't be behind people all day with goggles or without goggles. And uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Sorry. Uh, just just bummed for sure. Uh, start was bad. First half of the race was bad. And then I just I knew <clears throat> I knew that Bryson was starting to, to pick up the pace. I don't think the mic's working, but that's OK. Um, uh, yeah, Bryson was picking up the pace, and I knew there was another Yamaha up front. I couldn't tell who it was, and uh, I just <clears throat> luckily had one good line that I kind of missed on that last lap, but I, I made three passes on the second to last lap, was able to uh, have clean, clear trail for uh, a moment there, and, you know, finally was able to, I, I, rip, I probably ripped off the, the best third lap of the race for sure, maybe, maybe the fastest last lap too, but... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, just I was too far back, and then uh, I lost the goggle battle in the end. I, I rode right up underneath Bryson's grab bar that last lap, and I, I ruined my goggles. Helmet got heavy, and it was just uh, too little too late. I, I was thinking I could maybe bonsai into this finish line, but uh, I couldn't. So, live to fight another day, you know. Um, you know, congrats to the, the number one there, B. Neal. He definitely rode a, gr a great race up front, and 
just, uh, yeah, I don't know what it's going to take to beat them. We're, we're getting closer. That's pretty exciting, but uh, just haven't figured it out. Walker, you're chipping away at it each race. How do you feel going into round number four? Um, good, for sure. Uh, where are we, Camp Coker? Um, you know, that'll be a sandy race. Uh, if it keeps raining, definitely it will be just about like Florida. So, um, yeah, you know, every race, I, I am still having fun. I'm just starting to get a little dejected. Uh, man, we're working hard, and I'm, uh, I'm enjoying the ride. I'm, I'm, I'm putting in great laps, but we're just coming up short every weekend. So got to figure out how to consistently be the, beat the guy that's uh, consistently beating you. So uh, we're not going to change anything crazy. Bike's getting better. I've gotten better. Um, just... Just got to get the start and enjoy the ride. All right, guys, that is your second on the day, Walker Fowler. Johnny, I think that is the first time since 2022 Walker Fowler has had an interview where it wasn't, oh, a great day of racing. You know, he came back last year. He was content with just being out there and content with the podium, stoked on it. That was championship caliber Walker Fowler right there, not satisfied with not winning. Yeah, absolutely. No question. Uh, it looked like he was very frustrated with the way the day went down. Uh, and when you come up only a few seconds short and you're that frustrated, tells me he's only going to be happy with one thing, and that's the center of the box. So it's going to be some great racing action moving forward. I do think we have Wyatt Wilkin in his first ever post-race podium interview, and uh, we'll throw it down to them. Yeah, guys, we are here with Wyatt Wilkin, third place on the day. Like you said, first podium. Man, take us through it. Oh, man, where to start? Actually, we'll start the start. Uh, my dad, he gave me a little hint on the start. He was like, man, there's grass on the inside. Give it a try. Gave it a try, and Dewey came out the whole shot. I was so pumped. I was screaming in my helmet. The last thing I wanted to do was lead on the first lap. There were so many holes out there. So I pulled over, looked back. I saw Bryson and Jared, both experts. I was like, you know what? Let them go. I'll follow. Uh, just tucked in behind Bryson the whole entire race. Um, Walker caught us there at the end, had a little bobble. He got around, and I was comfortable. I was like, you know what? These guys know what they're doing. They got me here. Let's just tag along. Freaking lost my tether, hit a corner. Tether came out. My heart dropped. I didn't know what it was, what happened at first. I thought it was the motor. And then finally I saw the tether, couldn't get it in, slimy. Um, so I lost that front pack, so I had no idea if I was running. The, their pace or freaking B class pace, I was so confused. Like, I don't know. I, I was so many emotions running through my head. Uh, but we got it done, third place. I am so happy. Why you were able to stay up there with the lead pack. Do you have some confidence going into round number four? Competition? Confidence. Oh, confidence. Oh. Man, does it feel good? Like, I've been putting in the work, and it just hasn't showed. I've just been grinding my nose on a freaking stone, and <laughs> we're here. I'm happy, and now I'm just going to keep pushing forward. <laughs> All right, guys, that's your third place, Wyatt Wilkin. Hey, well, that yeah. was some real emotion. Yeah. And, hey, man. Yeah, love that. Love that. You don't think that, that young man is passionate about GNCC racing? Well, just hit the rewind. Rewatch that one. Uh, Wyatt Wilkins, Stoke Forum. Congratulations, young man. Welcome to the first podium. Hey, it's also racing. What have you done for me lately? you got to keep doing it and doing it more. Bryson Neal with the win. Fowler, an unhappy Walker Fowler. He wants the win. Second, Wilkin, an emotional podium uh, celebration for him. Hunter Hart just outside of that top 10. And Johnny, I don't want to rub salt in the wound a minute back from third place. Yeah, rough day for Hunter Hart. <clears throat> you know, he, he uh, did get that podium in, in Florida, but uh, you got to believe he, he wants to be on the podium. He wants to be bad yeah. on Bryson Neal and Walker Fowler for these wins. That's it. Boric, great day for Boric. Uh, kind of turning the clock back a bit. Had some great battles uh, with Adam McGill. Ends up fifth uh, in the top ten. Austin Abney, decent day for him. Finishing sixth. Josh Merritt, he's got to get things turned around as we head up into uh, the Camp Coker Bullet. Uh, Stephen Harrell, solid day. McGill and then Ronnie Rush rounding out that top 10 in the XC1 Pro class. Uh, boy, Johnny, big takeaways from today? Man, big takeaways from today. We're going to kind of get the, the rundown of how things went. I mean, obviously, uh, ripping off right off the start, uh, Wyatt Wilkin just, you know, w when the green flag drops, the uh, the talking stops. He goes out <laughs> and, and puts the uh, puts the hammer down, grabbing the early lead. Uh, but, you know, it was just tough to get anybody stopped. You can see, look at all that contact. Like you said, uh, 
Oh, look at that. <laughs> Man, that was wild to see. Gnarly. Off off the bike there, Austin Abney. Uh, Chris Borch, great start. We saw, you know, these guys getting uh, getting stuck. A lot of lapped riders, a lot of stuck riders having to really pick their way through. Bryce and Neil spending almost the entire day at the front. Uh, Wyatt Wilkin able to wrestle it away from him for a little bit. And then the, uh, the charge late as they came through from Walker Fowler. But uh, we saw so much wheel-to-wheel -wheel action racing early. We had 9, 10, 12 guys together. The XC2 guys really catching yeah. up there. And uh, we actually had a College A rider leading on lap number one. Yeah, Jordan uh, Berg. Jordan Berg leading the way there. So uh, definitely Bryson Neal alluding to that in his interview, saying the pace was slow, wanted to make sure he's picking the good lines. And then uh, things really ratcheted up. And the only rider at that point that was able to go with Bryson Neal was Wyatt Wilkin in second. And then uh, ultimately working his way into lead. As we see there on camera, leading. And uh, then very soon after, making a miscue around a lap rider and uh, giving up that point position to Bryson Neal. Yeah, Bryson Neal, great job railing the outside line right there. And you saw Wyatt Wilkin check up and go, oh, yes, sir, you do have the line. All right, I'll tuck in behind you. And then from there, it was the Bryson Neal show, but not without a challenge. And you could tell by that post-race interview by Walker Fowler, he got up into second, Johnny, and he was not satisfied with it. No, not at all. And he came from way back. Uh, Bryson Neal kind of seeming like he had the race in hand, looking like it was going to be pretty easy. Had a little gap. And the next thing you know, this bike just comes out of nowhere, charging, gets around. Wyatt Wilkin, uh, and you can see actually right there is where Wyatt Wilkin had his issue, and then uh, Walker Fowler just taking it right to the rear wheels all over Bryson Neal, but when it came down to the final corners, Bryson Neal had just enough breathing room that uh, he was able to pick the lines, get it across the line, a big fist pump, and uh, this guy was definitely both locked in and clocked in today, <laughs> grabbing win number three of the 2024 season, getting it done, and uh, perfect on the points. 90 points is all you can earn in three races, and that's how many he's got. That's how many he's got, so who is going to step up and challenge him? We've had plenty of challengers. We'll be back in a couple of weeks uh, up in South Carolina for the Camp Coker Bullet. That's going to wrap things up for us today. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll knock a couple wheels off, go two-wheel racing. But in the meantime, on behalf of Jackson Burl, Zach Heron, Johnny Gallagher, our camera operators, JC, Matt, Josh, Mike, Leah, and Kirsten, the drone pilot. Welcome back, Gabe Scholl. Our manager, Dan Reinhart, our spotter, Hollywood, our EIC engineer in charge, that is Jordan McFadden. Our director, Don Hampton, producer, Adam Gordon, our executive producer Carrie Joe Russell on Mikey Wayne's. We'll see you at the races.